<laughs> Does Keenan like orange soda or was it only kale? We may never know. But my name is MG the Future. Thank you for joining me on my channel today. If you watched a couple of these already, don't forget to subscribe. Come on now. And if you're watching this on a replay, I appreciate you. Definitely look forward to your comments and questions. Like the video. Algorithm things. We're live Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023. The rent feels like it's already due. So let's get to it. I'm going to go back to a throwback instrumental while I try to share my link. This is MG the Future from three years ago. I guess I'm really am MG the Future. Let's talk about it. Be right back with you guys after these messages. from the same era. That was fire, by the way. Oh, that's a banger. Let's go. Of course. NPC life. Hey. Whipping work. Hallelujah. like can I get a like can I can I can I can I can I can I can, 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 can I get a like shout out to everybody in the chat today we're early earlier than usual uh, my name is MG the future and uh you know what I'm about already just like the good old days shout out to Shanann Ban I see you in the chat beats by blackout what's up with you Pedro78 what's good Beats by Amazon Peace. Beats by Blackout says that snare is crazy. That snare is from... I want to say uh, The Wave Kit. I think this is BWB The Wave Volume 7 or 8. Those snares during that time. Peru on the track. What's good, man? Ain't nothing. Peace to everybody. I got the B-Box set up. I did not reinstall my operating system yet. 
And because I didn't reinstall Mac OS to the later version, not even the latest, if I can just skip Ventura, that'd be good, but I might as well just jump. I think I'm gonna do that later on today. But um, I did get the NI keyboard set up, I think. It doesn't do nothing, of course, besides be a MIDI controller for now until you get the appropriate plugins or software to interface with the NKS format, which I think is cool. And I haven't discovered how to turn on the beautiful lights. Speaking of beautiful lights, let me turn it on. How about that? But yeah, so I don't have the scale mode. I haven't even spent time even trying to understand it. I just plugged it in and said, oh, shit, it worked. So I'm going to start there, reinstall my operating system later, and then get the machine working with the keyboard and see if I can... Um, find all the um, contact related stuff I'm gonna need going into the summer. I know for sure I want that damn Jade library to replace my East West stuff, but it's like $400. It shouldn't be too bad though. Maybe I could do like trapping East six or seven or something, I don't know, who knows. But that's where I'm headed with it. Um, I did get the um, hardware off my desk. I spent like an hour just cleaning and like keeping wires together, wrapping things up and moving it to a closet. So this is like, what you see on my desk, I don't know if you can see it too good either. No, y'all can't see my desk too good. Well, basically, it, well, there's nothing to see besides the machine, actually. So the machine is there where the NPC used to be. I used to have an SP404 right there and some more stuff. But um, now it's just, my, the focus of my whole setup is really just here on the left-hand side. The left-hand path, let's talk about it. I'm going to let y'all hear it too. I don't know if you can hear it though. This is the only weird thing about the way I did this. Um, I'll explain signal flow to you because I assume people, not maybe not people here right now, but people in the future are going to have a question about signal flow and stuff. So I can kind of address that since it's fresh in my mind. What the hell was that? Yeah, so basically on the left-hand path of my setup is everything. It's the Apollo, um, which... The two microphone inputs I have dedicated to microphones. I have two microphones. I'm about to get the other one set up with the little boom mic desk stand. That would be my Shure SM7B. That would be my rapper mic. And then I guess I'll keep this one in the eyeball for my streaming. Um, so I have the sound card for that. Then I have the D-Box under it. You could probably barely see it, but it looks like an Apollo. And it has all these cool switches so you can pass audio through it and listen to it through its converters and its two headphone jacks. But I don't need that. All I needed from this box here is summing. So it's one button I push called sum. Now, one thing I didn't know before I got into this, well, I kind of knew, I thought I could work around it. I knew it, but I thought I could work around it. I have an Apollo X6. And um, the problem with that is a six. <laughs> I need an Apollo X8 to use the D-Box in all of its um, inputs. This is a small thing to a giant. I just lose a stereo bus, but since I'm not a vocal producer often, it's probably not gonna make a big difference. And we could track and retrack and all this cool shit. So essentially, the Ponzi scheme I got going out from here is that all my outputs, <laughs> all six, go to a DB25 cable, which looks like a printer cable, and that goes into the D-Box. Um, and the D-Box, it's a, it's a control center for your studio. Like if you have like a big studio, multiple monitors, you need talk back for the fucking booth and stuff. It's one of those things. It's a centerpiece. But it also does something different than like, let's say like the Samsung C control or the Lisa's versions. There's so many different versions of that monitoring and talk back. Um, Samsung, Sam, Sam Ash has one called the Samsung C control. It's like $200. So imagine just that box, but then you put summing into it. And that's why I always wanted it. As soon as I heard about this from Gear Sluts when I was a kid, this had to be like 2010, 11-ish. Maybe even sooner. I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to have one of those. Because almost every last single engineer I try to get to mix my beats for me, they had one. They didn't do a really good job explaining the shit to me, but I read about it, saw videos, whatever. So it does eight channels of stumming, which is four pairs of stereo. And in your DAW, they don't appear as anything. It's not digital. It's completely output to input type of thing. So in your DAW, let's say you're in Pro Tools or something, you would have a up to eight sends out, or buses really, so this is what busing is for. So in my case, I'm gonna have four buses, or I'm supposed to have four buses, but I have an Apollo X6, so I only have three of them. And what's cool about the D-Box is the last pair, seven and eight, you could pan on this one right here. Seven and eight has a pan knob dedicated to it. I don't know if y'all can see that. And what that does is, let's say if you assign instruments to the seven and eight, 
then you can make them wider than the rest of the mix, the drums, the bass, and everything. So it's like an extra pan law or extra stage in your setup on an analog level, right? Analog spreading, pause, that you could do just to a certain bus. So I can't use this bus. I can't use five and six, but I got one through four. So drums, samples, bass, however I want to do it. It really doesn't matter ultimately which goes to which. You just freestyle it on the, on the low. What I did differently though is most people, what you're supposed to do is loop this back to the Apollo with two inputs. So there's two outputs on this. And um, that is the summing output. And this is what the D-Box is doing. You can hear it through that output or you can hear it through the headphones directly in the D-Box too if you wanted to. I trust it. You switch that back to your DAW, and on your DAW, you monitor that input. So it's like all your sounds are going to go to the D-Box, you're not going to hear nothing because you're not monitoring it. Your headphones are plugged into main out. And that's the thing about the Apollo. Output 1 and 2 are dedicated main outs for your speakers. So it's like, what the fuck? I can't just send audio through 1 and 2? But then I thought about it. What am I going to listen to if I'm dedicating outputs as outputs? Like, I can't hear it when it comes back in. Anyway, oh, rookie mistake, $800 mistake. All right, so, because um, I think the Apollo X8 was like an 800, 400, 800 dollar difference, right? Just for two inputs. What the fuck? So mine's is a little bit different. I'm not going out to no goddamn Apollo yet. I was like, I bought all this other cool shit. So my stereo output or my sound output from the console. So it's like emulating an SSL, if you if you can imagine. Basically, it's all it is. It's it's turning your in the box mixes into a console, right? The gluing, the summing, that's what that's about. So you do that for mixing and mastering. So boom, take that signal out. I say, yeah, I'm cooler than that. Then I have to go to uh, not a D-Box, but a DI box, which can be confusing. This is for like your mic to line conversions. And you need these anytime you leave your computer. If you're Even if you don't have a D-Box setup or an Apollo setup, you can leave, use the outputs of any sound card. Even like the older focus rights, you could do this. You can just take the extra outs, like out three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Never one and two, because they're always your speakers and headphones, right? That, that fucked me up in the game. But three, four, five, six, and so on. If your sound card has at least three, four, right? You send that shit out and you want to do something cool to it, like um, reamp it, guitar pedal, um, preamp, guitar pedals, maybe not your samplers. Like your SP and your MPC don't need this stuff. Although when it hurt it. So I go into the D-Box so it can go to a preamp. So it's going to take line out and convert it to microphone in, or shit, this is hard to say. From the perspective of the D-Box, line in from the sound card, microphone out to a preamp. Boom, that's it. It don't go no further than that. My preamp is a dual mono preamp called the Focusrite ESA 2. It's the ESA preamp that you see that looks like a lunchbox, but it's two of them. How at your boy. And then we go from there. The reason why I needed that, outside of all the sonic flavor and goodness that it comes with, because it has four switched models to emulate for um, preamp signals, or basically it dictates the type of harmonics that the preamp puts into the signal. So it goes from low to high. So low, ESA 110, medium, and high. And each of those saturation stages affects the signal. So if I'm just trying to mix a bass through it, I can do low. If I'm dealing with vocals or something, I can focus on high. And then ESA 110 is like neutral or the typical. The ones that don't have switches just sound like that. And then you have medium, which is going to affect your mids necessarily. So that I go out of that because you have to drive the Zulu, which is a tape emulation. So the Zulu can emulate cassette or reel-to-reel. -reel. And usually in the production process or music process, your Zulu or your tape is the final, it's the master. But because we have computers, I gotta record this, and then I can master it with Ozone or Lander or something after that. If I gain stage, ah, if I gain staged correctly. So that's how, that I had to set that shit up, figure that shit out, mentally do it, and then I had to do one cable at a time. And my, my big ass going back and forth under the desk to see which one is left, which one is one, which one is right, which one is seven, that shit was annoying. That took most of my time because the breakout cable doesn't isn't isn't labeled that way. So, yes, DAW, console, tape. Theoretically, I don't need nothing. I should be able to muster the tone and sound. 
that only I know this, obviously, and not need not a damn thing else. Not for real. Unless we start getting into like better limiters or better makers and shit like that because you want to be fancy fancy, but I'm not there yet. So that's the setup. That's your jug. Out the Apollo, into the D-Box, out to the D-I-Box, to the preempt, to the Zulu, back to the Apollo. Big ass loop, and you pray that you have low latency when you do all that shit. Um, but let's go. I think I'm just going to do an example in Ableton. So I, cause I still got to figure out how to use it. I'd set it up once and I got confident. That's it. It didn't go no further than that. I didn't make beats all night. Nothing like that. I was tired. I was sweating. Realize I'm still out of shape a little bit. We're going to fix that by the summer. Let's talk about it. All right. So, but I got my 49 keys back. That's half the damn battle. 41. What is it? It's not 49 keys. The hell am I talking about? It's 37. Then it's 40. What? I don't know how many keys. For, yeah, it is 49. What the fuck am I talking about? It is 49 keys. I ain't that retarded. Okay. So I have four. I, have, sorry, I keep saying four. I should have four buses. I don't have four buses. I have three buses. So maybe I'll just fuck around and try to make a loop and assign different elements of the loop to each of the three buses. And then I'll show you the panning thing I was talking about. We'll see. One thing at a time. I don't know what sounds to use for analog tape and glue. We could use like real pianos and stuff, but that's, uh, I'm not inspired. Contact, maybe my keyboard will light up if I put contact on this. Throw some contact on that bitch. Boom, boom, boom. How you act like you don't recognize my controller, bitch? You're literally, Recognizing my controller. You you realize channel one, but you don't realize channel two? Oh, maybe it's because it's not a sound selected. I'm just overreacting. 40's very own keys. Let's let's start there. Somewhere humble. Oh yes. Finally. Is it on my keyboard screen? It's not. So I gotta update my Mac so I can get the updated native access. And that's all. The only reason why I gotta update my Mac is because of that. And that's trash. But here we are. I gotta get used to how to s stiff these are paused. Is this a Fatar key bed? Y'all know anyone know? Anyone knows this is the Fatar? I don't, I can't tell. Everyone was like, oh, this is like one of the best key beds. I'm not even used to playing keys this big. Pause. Ah, oh, I got it. You got transpose on this hole? Doesn't have transpose, or it probably does have. Should it, fuck, it better? It better have transpose. I just don't know where it is. I just want to change the key that I'm playing. And C minor is getting on my nerves. Not the keys, but the tone of it. Even when I learned it, I wasn't never playing in C minor. I was just playing the shape. I always like negative four, whatever key that is. Let's be serious now. This is the sound. That sound is too churchy, organy, old. Why don't you just start off in the category I was in, though? Like, contact. Y'all really need to fix that. That's goofy. That's gang goofy. Nah, you're going to piss me off. Stop playing with me.
Why does that sound like it's in key? It's like, it's like these keys switch to a different chord. Right there, what the fuck is that? This key switch it to another note. That ain't, that's not how that works. That's not how you use round robin. It's not to switch the key, you son of a bitch. Right there, what is that? I wanna keep it, but I don't know what note it is. Right there you do it. Why do you do it randomly? Right there, what is that? Fucking waste. It's a fucking waste is what it is. It's not predictable, whoa. You ain't got none of the sounds. What's that about? Uh, none of these shits are speaking to me. They're just too bright for what I'm trying to do. No. Keyboard stop sliding. Capture that hoe. Mm. You didn't. You didn't capture that. That's that's not what we do in these streets. Shemp out. Keep it shemp out. Why are you not goddamn? Okay, I was about to say, boy, yo, stop playing with me. It's always you. It's always the first note in Ableton. It's okay. We're not going to be using Ableton to make these beats anyway. You still got rid of it? You still got rid of it. I, I, I quantized it so you didn't do that. Oh, and why, because I'm making a loop, I just had thought of this. The T for today is um your boy, y'all boy, not my boy, y'all boy, Murder Beats has said, if you know you only added a percussion or clap to a beat, please stop saying you produced it. Let's start normalizing that in 2023. And then in my brain, I said, well, if you didn't do none of the music in the beat, you should stop saying you produced it. But, you know, tomato, tomato, pish posh. It'd be sad if we learned how to play one, four, and five with all the money that we have sitting at home trying on watches. But that's none of my business. That's some hater stuff. All right, so we go here. Holding people accountable to actually do better and love their craft is hating. Let's go. Shout out to the chat. Machine day? Hell no. What do you think? What year is this? Shout out to Modern Day Mowgli. I see you. Beats by Blackouts in the building. James Bagnum, yo, what's up? I appreciate the content. No problem. Thank you for watching it. Composure Slim's in the building. Christopher McDaniel's out here. D Money Baby, I see you. Two Papa says, All Man MG Future with Breakfast. What up, everyone? Keyflow says, D Box Gang. We all D Box Gang. The Gear Sledge Dream Loadout. Exactly, Keyflow, exactly. 
I've been trying to get this set up since damn. I wrote down this setup three times on three different notebooks since going to gear slits, trying to answer my question, how to get my struggle beats from Fruity Loops to sound professional. And here I am. Who would have thought of it? Christopher McDaniel says, I'm playing with one quarter inch wires can drive you crazy. Yes. Especially when you can't label them or you don't have the little machines to help you do it. Do make us a shout to MG the Future. Bless up. I appreciate you. Two Papa says the S61 is a French hard key bed. Okay. Inner Dragon was good. Ayo Kakondo, Marcus Tumbling. What's up with everybody? I'm glad to see y'all in here. Let me see if I can get just two. I just need a cord. They said it's a bottom texture pause, bro. Oh, shit. I could just use this shit. I'm bugging. I forgot I had this. I got to remember how to get it back. I need to back this shit up. Well, no, it's on my external hard drive. Hopefully, motherfucking, the new operating system will make this difficult to put this back. Because this is like my favorite thing I never use. There we make it sound realistic I need another realistic sound take me the take me to church Maybe I'm, a, maybe I'm just a cello type of guy. I would never need that. Who, who need, no one would ever need that. No one would ever need that sound. That is not even one you would... You are not buying this plugin for that sound. That is not what's happening. All I have is plucked instruments that I like that are sound old. Man, that's high. That's high top garbage, dog. What is going on here? Old radio? It's not even there. It can't even find your wave files, dog. And they're not nowhere special. You don't have a violin. You don't have a string section lower than that. I know you don't. A Mountain Dew climber? Boy, if you don't get your... Ass off. What the mountain? What, what in the PBS television am I scoring? Like, how come you just don't have like a category of good sounds? Like, that's all I'm looking for. Hey. Consistent on the velocity. I gotta get used to that on this keyboard.
cue, I gotta do this. Actually, I'm not gonna EQ it in this state. I'm gonna EQ it going to the D box. So I have three tracks, three stereo tracks, and um, so it's gonna give me um, access to the six stereo outputs that I have. And on Ableton, it's pretty simple to follow signal flow. So right now I can hear all these VSTs because they're sent to the master channel and audio out. And the master channel goes to the dedicated out one and two. What a fucking waste of eight outputs. Is that so your speakers and your headphones can hear it? That's how you hear it, that's how I hear it, right? That's the only thing that OBS picks up on too, right? So far, so good. But if I want to change that and send it here, and the cool thing about this is it has the LED indicator. So as soon as you send signal to it and it recognizes it, you'll see it light up. If it wasn't for that, you'd be it'd be so fucking confusing. So external outputs, skip one and two, go to three and four. External outputs, skip three and four, go to five and six. External outputs, skip five and six and go to seven and eight. Now all of them can go to the same one. <laughs> I don't know what it's summing at that point if they're all being the same stereo thing, but maybe one and two get summed, I don't know. So when I play it, I should get green lights, and when I play it, we shouldn't hear nothing. Yeah, so one and two is lit up, three and four is lit up, and this EP is on seven and eight. That's the one with panning on it, so I'll be able to make the, the roads or whatever very wide. Now to hear this, remember it's a loop. My preamp is on, it's a loop, send the signal to sum out through everything, and then return it on a channel like, uh, we'll call it analog, because it is. Hey, finally. And we get external audio from three and four. I don't use one and two, because one is my mic. Second would be mono, because there's nothing. And that'd be my other mic, or my Moog. And then three and four was spare. I also have five and six and seven and eight, too. So I think what I'm going to do is um, put the profit on seven and six. I'm sorry, five and six, and then probably the virus on seven and eight. But I need another, like, I need another desk. Fuck all that shit. So three and four, you can see the signal coming from the D box. And if we do monitor, I should hear it, and hopefully you guys should hear it. None of that, none of that scratchy bullshit, huh? Is it because it's too loud, though? It is, cool. So what you're hearing now is God. It's in a totally different space. The Zulu's not even, the Zulu's not, it's not even loud enough to fuck with the Zulu, actually. It's way too low. But I could turn my headphones up, and I could turn the output up for y'all. Now I can EQ it through the analog world. Let's see if we can catch this. Uh... That pain thing I was telling you about. Let me see if I can get you on here. And that's fully stereo. Now I'm gonna make it collapse itself. So y'all can hear it. Mono. Straight down the middle. No questions asked. No fucking guessing. You hear really good too. But let's say this was a pad or your whole bus of synths. And you don't want it in the front of your bass and your drums and stuff. Fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Move your ass to the side. Perfect. More so because it does that in the analog domain. That's not happening with phase and all that shit. Allegedly. So you just you just play with it like you normally would. You don't even you're listening to it as it happens, and I guess you grow accustomed to that sound or whatever, and then you print it, and that's what we're about to do. Thank you. 
This one needs to be washed out for the flavor. I got the brand new flavor in here. Well, this one needs some delays. This one needs everything. This uh, I put that shit on everything. I don't see what I need though. What is this? Oh, that is what I need. Suedo guitar pedal. That's so cool. And then I can just Zulu it right away. I don't have to keep uh, routing or nothing. It's all going through this chain. I just gotta remember to make Zulu lo-fi if you're making loops. That's what I like to hear. All these niggas need a compressor, but that's okay. And basically this is the analog input, so when you want the final loop or the final stem from the hardware, you print it here. That's that, we're gonna drag it to its own channel real quick back to auto and just do no input for the audio loop itself. Hopefully we hear it. So that's the printed one. I'm going to try to switch it back real quick. Oh, my eye is blurry. Fuck. Why did I rub my eye? I can't see, nigga. All right, so we got that. We don't need these. And this one is resample, right? So this will just resample inside the DAW, I think. Am I correct on that? I think I'm correct on that. Let's go. Cool. We can mute all those and just AB these and see which one I like. Literally, we can just AB it. Where's that shit at? Where's my crossfader? Yeah, bitch. Yeah, ho. How do I switch my... How do I use my crossfader? Where are you at? Where's the Ableton Live crossfade at? Right here? There we go. That's crazy. It needs to be louder though. So left, when I sweep this to the left, it's the contact as it is within itself. What the effects in EQ too, because remember I put the effects on the uh, VSTs themselves. And then when you switch it to the right, the main thing I noticed changed dramatically is that it cleared the mud up from the bottom, the low mids, um, and just the space. The sense of space is slightly different, but Zulu does that. Anyway, Zulu will do that because of the nature of it being dual mono. But the, um, I'm listening to the frequencies, like the frequent, frequent, blah, 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 frequency response of the, um, 
the keyboards and stuff that are in like C3 and C2. It's like, it just says, hey, let me clear that up for you, buddy. What the fuck? could be my preamp too, adding all that extra stuff on the mids, which is beautiful. I'm, now I'm going to try and see if I can listen to the space, the dimensions of it, the, this way. That's crazy. That's so crazy, bro. It's like, um, it's, it, I get it now. I get why Fruity Loop sounds like the way it does too. Because all the audio is coming at you and in the box, all the audio is coming to the center. Like all the audio is happening like a like a like a wet bro. That's why they can't figure this shit out. Because it's 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 the fucking stereo imaging or the phasing or something. Something they're not coding right is causing this. In the box. The reason why they can't do analog in the box or reason why they're not nailing it, I should say. Is because in the box stuff. Oh man, how do I draw that? I don't know how to draw a 2.5 dimensional triangle. What the fuck? Okay, we'll try it this way. Fuck it. So let's say this is far left in your headphones or speakers, and this is far right, right? That's your, that's your panning. But what's happening to the frequencies? You know, these are low frequencies. These are high frequencies, right? What happens in the box feels like Everything is pointing, literally, all the frequencies seem to be doing this triangle effect where every last single sound is kind of like happening dead center. Like everything is coming to you. The center image or all the sounds, all the frequencies where they're strongest is right here. It's like they're pointing all to your nose. So even when you pan and stuff, the stuff that you're panning is panning in the back. It's like it's a right pan way back there. It's a left pan way back there. But all the stuff that's centered, your bass, the 808, the kick, the snare, not only are they centered, centered, but the frequencies are like in your fucking nose. Like they're pointing to your nose almost. But when you get into the analog stuff, it's like instead of it being pointy that way, it's, it's more room, I guess. Like it's wider. It's wider, like more consistently spaced out it's not pinched like the mid the top the high mids in that loop and the low mids are like right here in your nose though just follow your nose and it's like bro all that eq and panning don't do shit but the analog domain was like ha 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 we have a rhombus for you if you don't like triangles let's try a rhombus oh fuck shit let's try a rhombus bitch Even um, even at the same RMS level, the hardware is louder. Yeah, it wakes the signal. It, it, it fucking fucking wakes the signal up. I like that. That's what's up. Let me see. So I'm gonna reiterate this then. I'm gonna add drums to it to see how the D box. Ah, oh, fuck! I don't know what key this is. It doesn't matter. Let's just do drums. to see it.
That is nuts. The space is just a different space. It's not a different quality than in the box. There's nothing wrong with the quality in the box. It's just a different fucking space. I can't even explain it to you, like, with words, with the vocabulary that we have. It's a different space, that's all. And I think that's pretty important, especially if you're like a loop maker or a composer, and you're trying to stand out from everybody else who has the same Waves bundle and now same UAD bundles. It's like, nah. We're gonna have to throw some money at the hardware again because y'all niggas think y'all about to catch up to that. It ain't happening, Cap'n. Let's do a couple of these. So kick, snare, hi-hats. That's, that's usually the drill. And I can use a hi-hat loop. I ain't got time to be cute and clamorous for this example. Donde? Oh, no, not right now. I swear, it feels like the people that call me during the stream never call me when I'm not streaming. And I feel bad because it's like, I want to talk to you, but I really can't break this thought form. Please come again. We'll see. It's kind of aggressive. I guess. I ain't got all day for that. Ooh. I need more audio. That's it, that's it, that's, it. that's as far as it goes. Try an 808 because I only need two of them. I only need to guess two out of the two. I only got to guess two out of the goddamn 12 keys correctly. And I don't know. I don't know if I can do that bare naked like that. Let me see something. Let me see. I got hacks. Hold on real quick.
but it doesn't matter because I'm using repitch mode. So repitch modes are. Oh, it's a hoe. I'm sorry to say it's a hoe. Come on, dog. Not every time I open it. Yo, bro. In the age. Hold on, real quick. Hello? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone just let me know it's the end of the world. That's it. It don't go no further than that. Well, if it's the end of the world, we're going to make some end of the world slaps that sound that all goodness. Only King Flex is in the building. What's good with you? Marcus Thomas says, drop them likes. Says, Please drop them likes. What are y'all doing? J Beats and Waves is in the building. Ayo Kakando says, I'm abusing my rev too. I'm so blessed. Hey. That's what's up. J Beats and Waves is in it. Mr. Naughty, I see you. Sum it up, run it up. <laughs> Ayo, Kakano says that boy nice. Getting nicer and nicer on the keys. I appreciate that. Thank you. James Magnum, some how is it, how essential is that D box to your setup? I mean, I can't speak, I can't answer that question yet. I, this is my first as well. My first 24 hours with it. So I can't answer questions like essential. Not yet. But I've always known about it. I mean, it's essential enough to manifest it. You understand what I'm saying? Like it's it's been on my list for over 10 years, so. Is that essential in that realm? But in terms of like practice, like how essential is implied, like do you have to have this to? Probably not. I never had it until now. I haven't had it for 20 years of making beats, so it's not essential. But is it going to change the way that my stuff sounds and feels in a way that matters to me? Yes. So in that way, it's very essential. Kikondo says, I haven't used it. I have the UAD Arrow. I love the limitations. It helps me learn the console and whatnot with less. That's always a good, that's also, that's always, um, that's always true. Especially even if you do reiterations because you have limited channels. You have to bounce this to audio through all the analog. And you only get like two tracks. Then you bounce the next two. And then you stack those together. They all have been processed separately, individually, and all that stuff. It just keeps stacking. The harmonics keep stacking. So sometimes people to limited setups because they have to do so much reiterative looping or recording sometimes their stuff hits harder by the virtue of those reiterations if that makes sense Ayo Kakando says the mixer MG <laughs> well I'm getting older I guess as an older person we're supposed to be talking about mixing now because we can't talk about hyper pop no more Two Papa says so part so at this point all of your sounds are coming from the D box in the box VST, I, so at this point, all of your sounds are coming from in the box contact. In this demonstration, I'm using contact, yes. All my sounds are going to come from that? No. Kirkster says, don't put the drums and bass through the same channel. Spread the low end around, and the summing effect will be more obvious. Okay. You get a D box, you get a D box, everybody gets a D box. One day, said MG. Come on now, let's talk about it. G flat? What is that, E sharp? No, F sharp. It's there. That don't sound like no goddamn 808, though. Hell, nasty. That's ghetto.
Oh, that's why. It's inverted. Just in C minor. Whoa, hold on. this mentally the uh, stereo said the stereo side of the D box is the last two channels so I'm not going to re stereoize the sample so we don't have to worry about that he's El Cool J said no El Cool J said that who said that Kirkster says don't put the drums and bass to the same channel okay so the drums the kick and the snare can go together these can go together yeah we'll do it like that so I'm going to send this to analog external out three and four and then the kick and the snare, I can go to five, five and six each. So they'll both come through the same channel, which is fine. Mind you, you do this, like all your tracks and stuff, you can still have like 34 tracks, 64 tracks. Just at the end of your song or at the end of your mix, you're bussing everything together. So I'll give you an example of how this, I guess, ideally works. If you can use all fucking eight outputs. But let's say, I don't know, you're mixing a song and you have all these tracks over here on this side. You know how it looks in Pro Tools. Everything is just like, you know, this track, that track. You got like eight, you got like goddamn 50, 11 tracks over here. And towards the end, when you start mixing, mixing, or you start putting it together and making stems and stuff and buses and prints, like like a Pensado's Place episode, you're going to have these four tracks. They don't have to be four, though. For me, I like, I like four, bro. I don't like seven one mono for the kick like bitch what year is this so you're gonna have these are buses and then your buses can be accordingly you can have buses just for your drums or drums low or something however you want to do it you can have a stereo bus for bass 808 especially in our music in trap we do stereo bass so i never understood forcing it mono unless you're trying to do like an old ti beat so bass, and I'm talking about the Noah 40 bass. I'm talking about the goddamn low virus sound that comes in on the hook if you're doing r and B. I'm talking about everything down there. That's something else. And then you can have like another bus for like uh, your samples, your keys, your instruments. Basically, a keyboard bus, depending on how you make beats. Because if you really, really use a lot of instruments, you may map them differently for some reason which is fine, I'm not gonna judge you, but if you're a boom bat producer, same stereo bus for your sample, right? And then you have an extra one. Ideally, in a studio situation, these are vocals. These are all the tracks and dubs and eight by eight chorus stacks being all summed to this one channel. And then all of those channels get summed together in the hardware and you bring them back to a print bus, which is usually not your master bus. But this is like your quote unquote analog print of everything. That's what you end up mastering when it's all said and done. This one right here you print out or that, that's what you're recording from your output. So you still have as many tracks as you want making the beat. You just have to decide which of these tracks go. So like I just want those three tracks to go to this bus. I want those tracks with all the fucking Omnisphere shit to go 
to this bus. Oh, I got an 808. I got three 808s and a fucking drill sound. I don't know. I wanted to go to this bus. And then when the rapper comes over and you add another track for them, you could throw them to this bus. That's all that's happening. And those four buses together is the console. It's the glue. It's that that stereo separation and all the other shit it does. In my case, I'm mastering it too, kind of, because mine's is my hardware chain from this um, is going to tape via the preamp and Zulu, right? And this is happening outside of my session. But when I print it back in, everything that passed through everything gets one stereo print. That's it. You can print each individual bus from what D-Box does too? No, well, not easily. You could solo them and print each one individually if you just want to keep stacking. But if, what year is this? I'm not, no. Give me one Zulu print and I'm out of here. I'm flying. If I'm, I'm flying, I'm done. So basically, that's in my head. I'm trying to determine which of these tracks go to bus one. You know, that type of thing. That's all. And I'm completely making it up. There's no science for it. You just... Different results. So this one goes to seven and eight. Seven and eight, I believe, is the uh, the stereo pair. So the hi hats can go with the drums. I'm cool with that. I'm gonna create a new track track, which is the hardware print that tape that tape print I was telling you about in the drawing. That's everything coming back from everything. And in my case, that's channel three and four. And that's because the bass is spread now. We do the bass mono if we wanted to. It hit way harder. The bass hit way harder than this. That's nuts. being able to hear for the first time it's weird all placebo of course don't buy the hype
I've never had that experience before. That's so weird, bro. It just is different. It's not very different, though. It's subtle as fuck. Like, it's like, um... Like, I don't know, bro. I, don't, I can't... I, I can't pretend to... I can't pretend to put it in words. So this is the printed version. This is not going through nothing else. This is everything that was recorded from the from the from the loop, from the hardware loop. So out the D box through the Zulu, etc. And it's crazy because my waveform even reflects that I'm mixing more close. I'm mixing more correctly instead of everything being so disjointed. And you see the 808 is where it needs to be. My instrument bus isn't too loud like it almost always is when I make beats in Fruity Loops, just because of I'm trying to hear it in Fruity Loops, but then the actual manifestations incorrect yeah man i recommend it when you get to this point in your life where you've got all the beat making stuff go ahead and put your engineer hat on uh, it's got all the fucking extra uh delay to it though so you gotta be careful well if you're printing your whole song so you actually don't have to worry about delay compensation that much unless you're doing this while you're making the beat like i did with the loop then you got to make sure your, your downbeat doesn't have that. Make sure you truncate your audio files that you're just creating loops out of, basically. You don't need nothing aligned. You don't need MIDI. You don't need sync. You can just, because of the nature of what you're throwing through it, you know where the start and end time is. That's dope. That's actually, I mean, that's a beautiful waveform. I ain't going to hold you, bro. I've seen millions of them. That's nuts. i never seen. I never seen it. And like I said, it's low and it's fucking punching. It's punchy as fuck. I could turn the highs up, actually. But I didn't because I didn't because in real life, you're not printing out of your hardware ever at full zero dB. You never max. This waveform should never be max coming out of your profit, your fucking Zulu, nothing. That That's not the way this is supposed to go, okay? Just make sure I say that to people, because some people think because you're coming out the hardware, it should look like how it looks when you work with VSTs. That is not, that is, listen, if they didn't tell you, I'm telling you, that's not what's happening. But we put the God particle on it and see if it comes to life, especially in the high end since it's more 808 heavy. impresses me most that I, I seem to not be able to pull off consistently when I'm mixing kicks and eight bass is that the kick didn't lose its bite at all. Like, you know, those type of kicks, like those bounce kicks or Timberland kits or club kit kicks where it always has like a tail that, you know, it has the transient, the sustain in the tail and it has all that crunch and texture to it. Usually by the time you add bass or any synthesizer that's too low of an octave close to it, you start to lose the detail of that. So the kick will go boom. But when you start putting all your instruments and stuff, it doesn't it doesn't sound like that no more because it's being masked. So I guess like Brother Kirk was telling me, if I put the kick in a different channel than the 808, there's no masking. Not in the, not in the analog domain, not for that reason, because I, I could change the leaves of the 808. So that's crazy. I did not expect to use the panning section of a D-Box on the bass. That's cool. But um, yeah. Wow. I want to try and make a beat I actually like and then throw it through there. How about that? Yo, 
Y'all understand what I'm saying? That kick is sturdy as fuck. That kick still sounds like that kick. You know what I'm talking about? Like, the kick is still there. Like, it didn't go nowhere. Nah, oh, you can't hear you. Shout to the chat. I like it. Two Papa says, wow, so no hardware sounds yet? That D-Box is nice if it does that to in the box sounds, bro. It's night and day to me. Yeah, that's why I always wanted one. Because I knew for the price of a D-Box and a decent hardware setup, you buy a Phantom keyboard. Remember, the Phantoms and all that shit is like $3,000. Or you can get the hardware components externally, and every VST you download, every VST you buy can sound like that. Not the not the Sonics, not the palette, but the, the tone, the texture, all that shit. So I always kind of intuited that that's what was going to happen. I was like, oh shit, if I just throw everything through... Basically, I can get everything sound like it come off a keyboard keyboard. And I, that's always been my, like, vision for creating loops and stuff. I can do it now, bro. Rad Rod says, I'm not sure if it's my headphones or not, but I'm hearing the kick more on the right. Possibly. I don't know if those pan pots are exactly um, evened out. What's good? What's good? Two Papa says, how much you spend on the box? I don't, they don't even sell this box no more. The new D-Box is like, how much is D-Box? How much is the D, how much is Dangerous Music D-Box? How much are you? It's 800 used there, it's 2,500 new. But this one allows you to have three speakers. So if you have like a studio studio, Got the summing out like I got, except for their summing out. Oh, these are all quarter inches. Mine's are microphone out. Hey, I had to buy all those extra cables for no damn reason because they, because they didn't want to do this. But now they're doing this. So you got summing out, which is what I'm using. You get line out, which can go to, I guess your um, well no, yes, but no. You want the summing out if you're gonna use like compressors and limiters. You use line out if you're using different inputs and you just want to hear it through this and sample through that, I guess. You got your analog in so you can hear your DAW through your D box instead of your sound card. You got some light pipe spidiff type stuff. I don't fucking know. But this is the newer version. It does way more, but I, I but I need to emphasize something. All the shit that it does way more is if you have a studio, like Speakers like you need to switch between speakers. You need to talk back microphone to talk to someone in the next room or the booth or something Like these boxes are the control center for a studio desk Um, I'm just using it for summing So you don't have to have a D box to do summing like they make um Do it yourself type summing boxes too It's so weird having my keyboard and mouse on the actual right place. I'm not used to it yet. Like I know a lot of people in the tribe got one of these, but they didn't report back to me. They just ran off with the sauce and just disappeared. Shout out to Brito. But yeah, I don't know how this sounds, but in theory, this does it. So you buy this for $50 and two DB25 cables. So you take the eight outputs of your sound card and then it kicks it out, eight inputs back into your sound card. So this creates the loop. And it's passive too, so there's no power supply. But it creates that same stage, that, that uh, psychoacoustic stage that you listen to as you're mixing through it. And of course, you can kick this into a compressor or whatever, whatever, whatever. The only difference is it doesn't have... Um... No, I'm saying that incorrectly. 
It's not. It's not. It's not. D, it's not DB twenty five twice. This has two DB twenty fives because it supports more than eight channels, which is dope. So you have sixteen channels on this, like a traditional mixing board, and then the output should just be some. It is. My, and that's how mine looks, like a microphone. And you just put that right back into your DAW to record it all. So no, you don't have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars if you want to experiment. To, and I recommend it because you can experiment with that sound without paying a whole bunch of lot of money. You can just go, maybe that's all I need to do. Maybe I need to get one of these and just um, set my buses to it and um, mix my beats through this. Because that's really what it is. You set up all your buses and your template, and as soon as you import all the components of your beat, you assign it to those channels, then you start mixing, compressing, and EQing, print the final, and then master what you print, if that makes sense. So no, you don't need to spend a whole bunch of shit to experience that analog stuff. You'll get the experience. Now, will you get the D-Box experience? Will you get the SSL experience? No, but you are going to get out of that pigeonholed Fruity Loops Pan Law experience. That I can tell you. They got so many different kinds, bro. It's not even just those. You just got to know what to look for. I don't want an attenuator, bro. I want a motherfucking... Oh. Summing mixers category on Sweetwater. The a like I said, I always joke about the API. Them bitches is always $20,000 goddamn dollars. Six, $2,000 a month to do this through an API. Um, the Neve, Neve, Neve. They got one for two Gs, which is the same price as a D-Box, really. Yep, so it's the D-Box without the control features, which is why it's not really the same price because it has less features. So it actually costs more than a D-Box. But yeah, you can get this instead. This one does 16 channels as well instead of just eight. So if you need more buses and stuff and you actually do vocals or guitars and shit, you got these, you got these. Like, that's what these are. They're just turning your DAW into a console without the console. They got a 2G D-Box without all the studio stuff, which I was describing to you. This one has 16 inputs. Ain't that a bitch? They wait until I get old enough to have it to motherfucking stop. And this is the only one I need. I don't need all that other control room shit because I have an Apollo. But yeah, 16 channels. Um, main out, go back into the DAW, I think, because it doesn't say monitor out no more. I'm sorry, it doesn't say sum out no more. And then monitor out so you can listen to it. You can um, um, listen through your speakers through the D-Box instead of your sound card. You listen to everything through the D-Box, actually. But it makes no difference unless you record it. There's cheaper ones than this. This is a Sweetwater. There's, like, people who make these for fun. I don't know. Maybe on Reverb.com. Probably be the first place I should have went. Some people just make them. They don't even. It's not even a brand. Burl got one with thirty-two channels. That's the one that I got. This one with the monitoring section. That's like the other joint, but this one is just what? How do you plug into this? That's a DI box. You don't get the fuck out of my face. That's a DI box so you can record and sample from your phone, which is fucking lit. Especially if you like, you don't have samples or hard drive space for all your samples and you're just using like Spotify or YouTube, but you get the same quality you want into your MPC. That's what that's for. Uh, I don't know the names of the ones I'm thinking about. There's tons of used D-boxes, around $800, $600, if you want the old gray one that I have. What the fuck? Yo, last time I looked for a D-box, it wasn't this many D-boxes for sale. There wasn't even this many D-boxes at this price point. I'm getting kind of aggy. I would have bought a D-box years ago. If they're like 30 of them for 500 range. Get the fuck out my face. And that's because they dropped 20 new ones. This one, this one, this one. This one's new. Ish. Yeah, so. this Just, just, just look for analog summing boxes or 
passive summing. It's, it's really called passive summing. The DIY ones, I think, are all passive. There we go. No, not mixed to one. Black Line Audio, A. Hey. You know, that one's about to be Gangsta Grizzles. And this one has panning and level on each channel, so you can mix the stems in, on the fucking hardware, which is nuts. And it uses uh, microphone cables, TRS to female, male to TRS or whatever. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, they out there. Watershed. See, when this one's $350, but it's 32 inputs, which is blows all the other shit out the water. There we go. Um, a 32, so this would be 16 stereo, I think, if I'm correct. So this is like a 16 track stereo mixer console. And it only has two outputs. Back to your doll. DB to there. DB all through this bitch and out. But the question is, where the fuck do you get 32 analog outputs on a regular sound card? So what I think they're doing is using a mixer too. Like, you know, regular old Mackie, Gemini, Heath. You know, those sub-1000, sub-2000 mixing boards. Nah, you wouldn't even do it like that. Because they don't be coming with mad individual outputs. Where the fuck is this guy getting all his inputs from? That kind of irritates me. I'm kind of aggy about this question because I don't understand it. This is no fucking sound card with that many outputs. Unless you have multiple sound cards, which makes sense. Most studios that are using mixers like that have multiple, you have to have multiple sound cards of the same sound card. That's why they got all those fucking um, light pipe connections and stuff to link them together to make sure they're in time. Yeah, bro, if you have a if you have a studio with four three thousand dollar sound cards, you don't need to be saving money on no goddamn summon box. I don't even understand this. But with that being said, three fifty and I can only use one or two of them is still a deal, right? Because I'm only gonna use one through eight, maybe nine through sixteen if you have two sound cards, maybe. But still it's a three hundred fifty dollar summon box, so don't let it don't don't you let it get to your head. Ooh, there we go. There we go for the 76er. That's all I needed to see right there, boy. Yeah, one of these shits. It's like a little dongle, bro. It's not even, it don't even gonna take up no desk space. That's crazy. Yeah, this type of shit. So it's eight balanced input, which is what I got, DB25. So you use your regular Focusrite, Claret series, or whoever series with the eight analog outputs. Eight analog outputs, not six plus two but eight analog outputs to a db25 cable snake cable you plug it into this bitch like your printer back from windows 95 and then to the two trs outputs back into your input and you just mix through this originally 150 dollars on sale 75 dollars i just want to make sure i show everybody because i know everybody's not about to drop hundreds of dollars to hear psychoacoustic effects you feel me Shout out to the chat. I need to grab a smoke real quick, quick, guys. I'm not going nowhere. It's just in the next room. I normally don't smoke in here. I shouldn't smoke in here now, but I'm grown. Be right back. <laughs> Do I have a beat to play for you guys while we're waiting? What? I don't even remember this.
remember making a beat. Oh man. I'm gonna try to get through all the comments in the chat. And then like I said, I'll make something in Fruity Loops and throw it through the D-Box separately. Shout out to Inner Dragon, I see you. Peru says, oh wow. Saptastic says, Scalar has new multi-outs for notes. So within chords, you can, oh yeah, so you can multi-out the notes to different VST channels. Scalar's at it again. Damn, Daniel. How the fuck I'm gonna use Scalar with Machine, though? I'm gonna have to be one of those goddamn Machine VST instance head-ass producers. No, I'm a grown-ass man. I'm making my loops before I touch Machine. Y'all ain't playing with me. Making my loops and mixing them through D-Box, then I'll make the beat in Machine. I ain't playing. It is cumbersome on Ableton Live, but yeah, you can play chord progressions with great presets. Oh, Saptastics was still talking about Scalar. Red Viagra, wow. That's not like regular Viagra, that's like bad Viagra. I had the same exact D-Box and I gave up on it after trying to hook it up properly. I will follow this video and try to hook it up again. Yeah, when you, so I don't have it hooked up properly because properly is supposed to replace my Apollo for my headphones and my speakers. I didn't do that. I didn't find the need for it. I wanted it for summing. So the only thing that I used was the DB25 cable and two microphone or basically female to TRS to create the loop to my main sound card. You can follow that. Matter of fact, the Fabian guy, the Hispanic dude or whatever, who does the D-Box videos, it's in his video. Just look at where he plugs in the DB25 and where he puts summing out. Those are the only two things you need. It don't go no further than that. You start trying to hit all these goddamn switches and do a TV, analog, radio, FM broadcast setup. Uh-uh, no, fuck that. I make beats, dog. Uh-uh, no. I'm not, talk I'm not using talk back to nobody. I'm talking to myself half the time. I don't got time for that. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Jeremy Burke, Kirk just says the magic with the DRE type summing box is that you can pair it with whatever preamp you want to get the particular color that you want. The D box has a built in preamp, so you get one color. Correct. And that's the other thing that's really interesting about my colors. Speaking to what Kirk is speaking to, I did that diagram in my head too, the color flow. And mine has five colors. And they all stack harmonically, like because now we're talking about electricity. We're talking about very little increments, and you don't you don't need more than however many you want. But just by the nature of the equipment that I end up buying, experimenting through this, let's say this is your audio signal, just basic you know triangle waveform, whatever it does. You know, you use your imagination. So what colors do, or what hardware does, is it taints the signal. So just by going from digital to analog, for instance, you want to get a different headroom or a different space. So mine comes out and it goes to the DI or the D box, right? So the D box has its color on your waveform that it adds. So sometimes these colors may enhance the high end, which is what I'm noticing with the D box, whatever, right? So you got one color. Then you have like Kirk's or something about with the passive joints, you got another preamp. I have a preamp by default. I didn't know that. I didn't know the D-Box had a preamp. Well, yeah, I did because there's a fucking summing output knob in front of it. So it has to be a preamp. But I'm not an engineer, like a mechanical engineer, so that didn't even cross my fucking mind. But technically, it does have a preamp because there's a headphone amp and an output knob for summing. Mine should be max. I don't know why it's not. So you get that color from the D-Box, right? Then that goes into the DI box. My DI box had to be fancy. I didn't get like a $50 DI box. I got one that had colors in it. So... My DI box, whatever it does with his nickel plating, it adds that color to the waveform. Mind you, it's the same sound. It's not going to change your 808 to a better 808. It's just going to enhance whatever is there with those harmonics. Then we go through it again. Then we go through my actual preamp. My actual preamp is the ESA, the Focusrite. It's not the best sounding preamp, in my opinion, because I've heard many. But it's better than no preamp. And it has four different flavors but they're subtle, they're clicks. They're not like totally different flavors like some other DIY stuff, but they're four different ranges of the same Rupert Neve suggested flavor, right? So technically I should use a gradient for this, but I won't. Just know that my actual preamp then colors it to four different ways. And then the Zulu, tape. Tape satch. 
the reason why the Zulu sounds good is because of this effect, not because it actually emulates tape, if you don't know that nuance. So the Zulu does its tape thing, or it's a magnetic distortion or whatever, to whatever order harmonics it does it to, and then that signal is added to whatever sound that goes through it. And if you get really fancy, technically, if you're an Apollo user with the, uh, I didn't use that for some reason. I didn't use my unison inputs because mine only has two. But if I did, well, even if I don't, I can still go into my Apollo console on three and four, which is this. And I can still do, um, it won't be unison, which does something differently slightly, but I can still put a fucking preamp on it if I wanted to. I put vertical on the end. I can put tape on the way in. As I'm recording it back into Ableton, I can do any of those flavor majiggers. And just the nature of it recording back into your sound card is a color too, right? Because you're going from digital to analog, 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 analog back to digital. That's going to cause another color. God damn it. You got all these fucking colors, bro. You just you just live your best life. And it, like I said, that might not be as pronounced as the D-Box set of colors, but it's just another set of colors. So when you're using hardware processing, that's what's happening. You're adding more complexity or you're adding more detail or you're adding more information to your waveform. You're not necessarily getting a different waveform. Like you're not adding to the kick so it can sound like a clap. You're not adding to the fucking sign patch to make it sound like a super saw it takes a saw and makes it sound like a super saw that's that's what's happening um and you, like i said you don't need that many colors diy re is actually the good f starting point for all of you i still want to do one once i get some spare spare money because we're in the middle of like a fucking crisis or something but once i get some more spare spare money i think i'm gonna go back and diy re some shit because i'm bored Bored with Sonics. Bored with the same sounds, I guess. Trump Gang Music? That is a wild name. Tupapa says, I use an Audient ID14 at the moment, so I need to build up to the D-Box SSL level. But there's no build up. I'm not built up to no level. Anyone can do this. Just make sure you got the right inputs and outputs. It's not, it's not like a if you're ready thing, unless it overwhelms you. It can't overwhelm you. Like on my hardware, it overwhelms me. Shit, where's my profit at? Where's my virus go? How come the Moog has like this static in it? Where the fuck is this? Why is my patch bay like? That shit make you not want to make music sometimes. Especially because this we're trying to create a studio at home. But the difference is in real life, if you have a studio, you have a studio personnel to do this. One person isn't, I want to say supposed to do all this. I think you should supposed to do it and learn it all. Just like the studio hand learns it all. But once you get to a certain level or age or experience in making music, Technically speaking, when you go to a hip factory in Miami and they have all that shit set up, you're asking someone to punch you in, to push it in, to patch you in. You're not fucking, you don't give a fuck about, you think P. Diddy knows about signal flow? Never going to happen. And that's not to say he's not intelligent. I'm saying that's just not his, that's not his life path. So it doesn't have to be yours either. Don't get too funky with it. But I just say that to say it's not a if you're ready thing. For me, it's out of necessity. I really care about how my music sounds that much. Keyflo said he caught his at 400. Chio Guevara says something like an antelope audio has that many outputs and inputs. That is true. Very rare, but very true. And you, you imagine how much that shit costs versus what you're trying to do. It doesn't make sense. Send this beat to RX Poppy. I'm not even sure who that is, Spy Spy. Now, this will get placed for real. Now, this is hitting. I remember when you made that on live. I do not. That's crazy. Antonio McKinney says, yo, New Tank, shout out to AM the legend. Ayo Kakando says, that's easy. Don't use machine. That's funny. Use the Blue Cat audio in it. Oh, yeah. Almost forgot about that. Do I still have that? Installer. Do I still have the email when I got it from them? Mm -hmm. 
create the F, loop in FL, make the beat on the NPC, and then summon out into Luna, figure out how to send Luna to the fucking D-Box and bring it all back. Oh, Lord Jesus. That's like an extra hour in the workflow. I don't want to do that. I'm just talking about switching between dolls is just an extra hour. Yelling at my screen, renaming my files, setting up buses, color coding everything every time. I hear a voice in my head. Use templates. Fuck out of here. Who asked you? Haru says need the NPC first. So yes. I didn't sell my NPC. I still got all my hardware. I just got it out this room so it didn't overwhelm me while I focus on this season. But I have a lot of dope machine beats. I think more than anything, why I'm happy that I got machine when I did. Because it was around the time I was playing those old beats and I was like, you know what? Machines sound pretty good for R&B now. It ain't my go-to for boom bap. And the brother Camo is like spazzing on Twitter because I think he wants an old NPC, like NPC 2 or 3000 or something. He said, how come all these people that got these old NPCs, they always making the same beat? Basically, he's looking for someone with an older NPC like Toomp or somebody to be making trap or other types of beats, and they don't. They put a drum break in there, a kick, a snare, a one-note bass, and, a, and some type of jazzy... Thelonious Monk sample on every fucking NPC 3000 video. And if you're lucky, you get the ones who remember late 80s and they put like the siren or horn stab at the top on the hook. That's it. It don't go no further. It, don't go, it can't go further than that. And he's upset about it. And I was like, I'm not about to be upset about that. I'm not buying an NPC 3000 to make shorty red beats. That's not what I'm about to do. It don't even have the RAM for that. Maybe it does, because you're just using them four bars anyway, but still. But yeah, bro. When I was listening to my old machine R&B, I was like, hmm? I was like, hmm? Even when I was like trying to teach my cousin how to use machine, all those beats were fire, too. machine one of those machine kits actually i never use machine kits but that's a machine kit one of their new west coast kits they did at the time and sample tank this is machine too this is not boom bap but i can tell it's not the npc though but it's good enough y'all about to find out in a couple of days wish me luck on reinstalling my mac and not losing shit if i get everything i need back and i'm on the machine i'm just going to I'm just sticking. I'm doing this all day. I'm not. Don't ask me how to do no hyper pop. I'm just not going to happen. NPC's kick would just be busting through the speaker. But it's good enough, I fucking guess. You throw that through my fucking little hardware chain, I ain't gonna notice a difference. I'm lying. I'm always gonna notice the difference. But it's not enough for me to care no more. This is machine. Nah, fuck that. I never heard that beat mastered. This is not mastered. This is just mixed in logic, raw. Like, I didn't put no effects on that. That's crazy. Like, I be mixing, mixing for real, but I just act like I don't because I don't want people to, act to ask me to teach them how to mix because I feel like that would be cap on my part. I can't teach you how to hear. 
Shit, I can barely hear. I, I just now hear bass lines. But maybe it's the perfect time to teach it, because now my ears work. Lord willing. Maybe the whole time it's been my fucking headphones, too. Because these are the most expensive headphones I've ever bought. Uh, no, because I mix this without these headphones. That's not the right answer. Right answer for teaching it, though. Where the fuck is the goddamn saw set? I need to hear this like this. Sorry, guys. I'll be with you in a second. We'll, we'll, we'll get the cooking. I need to re-inspire myself with myself. There we go. There we go. Hey. Johnny A says, there's no best, just what makes your workflow work. And I make some cool stuff. Something to be said about a two preamp over the plug, though. Dawes Studios are cheaper than hardware, plus old vintage gear doesn't sound as good as some of the plugins. There's stuff that goes into both worlds, like microphones. You're absolutely right, Johnny A. But I will say that, so everyone makes that case. And it's a good conversation, so don't take it personally. Like, anytime I start getting, like, passionate about this shit, I sometimes start code switching my language because of how passionate I am. So I just want everyone that listens to me to know that if you disagree with me, you have a different point of view or perspective, or you feel like, because just the nature of you listening to someone talking, just know that I'm not talking to you as a person, producer, talent, nothing that. It's just me expressing myself. I just want to use that preface. But when people say things like, yo, hardware has its downside. All of hardware's downside is technical. None of hardware's downside is sonic, though. The only sonic downside to hardware, perhaps, is noise. The noise floor changes. I just noticed just now when I was playing back the D-Box and stuff, there's shh somewhere on one of the channels, so I got to hunt that down, line cable, whatever the fuck it is. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I need to buy better gold-plated DB25 cables. Something, right? That's a technical problem that affects the Sonics overall. That's annoying as shit. The ghost static, the ghost... I had that problem with my guitar pedals two years ago. I had my guitar pedals and wires crisscross all over the fucking place. I didn't have a problem once since I've been here. So the phantoms in the machine to get the best quality, yes, I agree. That's the downside. But if you figure it out, and you got the right light switch up, and you got the right cable under the desk, and everything sounds how it's supposed to sound. There's logis logistically, there's no fucking reason not to have hardware. And like when we start talking about pricing and stuff, you gotta remember, like, I'm talking to people, I know there's a lot of people out there who ain't got it like that, or don't have the type of blessings that I got just yet. But mind you, I was also the kid that couldn't afford none of this. And I still put my mind on it. The reason why that I have it is directly because I created the version of reality years ago where I would. I didn't know how I would. Financially, it didn't make any sense, especially when you're 
in a relationship with someone and your money is going to this and that instead. Overhead is high. Recession. Eggs is $8. That I agree. That part of the conversation is like, when do you jump in? Is it worth jumping in during times like that? If it affects you like that. I want to just jump into it for the sport of music if there's other things to buy, right? Hopefully we understand that. But if you get beyond all of that and you say to yourself, yo, I aspire to acquire all of these things piece by piece, brick by brick. Do it. If it takes one tax return a year for five years, then motherfucker, that's what you got to fucking do. That's what I did. Like, it wasn't like... um. Not And I'm just using tax returns as like uh, when you get a lump sum of money and that's when you can afford it, ideally. But it could be anything. You can sell a beat for $500 and instead of whatever, you can just save it and sell another one. Buy some ads on Instagram for $50. Get another 200 and just keep stacking and buy your first pro sound card, your first pro headphones. Like You should do that anyway. And when you get that pro sound card and you hear the difference, you're going to be like, hmm, I have all these extra inputs and outputs. Maybe I should fill it in. Maybe I'm not getting a Cooper guitar pedal, but I could find plenty of two to three hundred dollar lo-fi guitar pedals. Start there. SP404, best guitar pedal there is for the price. Then once you get the SP404, you'd be like, yo, this shit is RCA. That's kind of wild mids. The new one isn't though. I haven't heard the new SP404. That's TRS now, which is dope, finally, right? But then that takes something away from it. Because the RCA is what makes the hip hop and boom bap and lo-fi stuff sound crazy. Because it limits the sound, the, the sound stage to CD quality, if you will. It sounds like a record. It sounds like the old records because they're all printed to CD. Anyway. Then you buy preamp. After you get a good sound card, the next loop you create is the preamp. And preamps range from all prices. Some are very expensive. Some you can build yourself. If you're a technical engineer type person and you don't mind soldering, you can build your own preamp for less than five hundred dollars. I think it's like two hundred on DIY DIYRE dot com. The colors preamps. You can just do that. They're like forty dollars a color, but you need two because you're doing stereo. So you're buying everything twice, but even then, it's still cheaper than buying a dual preamp. Matter of fact, they don't even have dual preamps that much. I think Warm Audio has one, Focusrite naturally had one, and then everything else is two thousand dollars or more. That's dual. So all those little box preamps for one microphone, you got to buy two of those. If you get a Golden Age, Golden River, $300 joint, buy two is 600 And then buy the earpieces to rack it so it's, you know, next to each other. Still cheaper than what I did. But what I'm saying is, it's literally not really an excuse not to do it. It just takes you time if you're not from that socioeconomic predispensation. And that's understandable. But what I don't like in these conversations is that because of technical stuff or because of financial stuff, people dismiss it. And the whole thing I ask everyone who dismisses it or tries to like, well, if I get the right stuff from Plugin Alliance and Waves and UAD, I can just do it in the box. And I'm telling you, as a person who's done that for 20 years, it's not the fucking same. And so much so, it's almost not worth doing that in the box. Because when you hear it out of the box, you can be like, what the fuck was I doing in the box? And, and this is where I get frustrated as a person who went through it. You spend all that time finding the plugins, watching the videos, setting up the templates, listening to Dave Pensado, and you're still not getting the music to sound like how you want it. Because outside of the tools, there's also experience too. But cool, you get all this in the box experience. And you can get good in the box mixes. I have a few. I don't think all my mixes are terrible, but I put it to you like this. The shit that I spent time tracking out, put into Pro Tools and mixing, mixing versus the stuff that I was just fucking around and throwing through pedals and Zulu and stuff. Almost always the stuff where I'm fucking around with hardware, meaning not paying attention to gain staging, noise floor, just hearing the sounds and textures that comes out, combining them and hitting play. That experience is a hundred times doper than if I fucking knew what I was doing with the API bundle. Every time. Why is it better is different. Technically, understanding what you're doing in the box and having the right game stage flow, channels and compressors and buses and sends, and everything's under control how it's supposed to be, everything's bust and stemmed out how it's supposed to be, 
You're going to get a more technical, better mix than if you did not do that. But what you're not going to do is play, play and be like, I like this tone and texture and sonics better than the horsing around I did on my NPC. It's, it's never, that's never come across to me. I've never looked at all this stuff and was like, damn, I wasted all that money. I should have just used my NPC. I have never said that. I said I understand why people have an NPC. The motherfucking drums hit. And that's the that's 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 a bigger point. The NPC without the Waves plugins hit harder than the beat you make with the Waves plugins. So where are we now? Oh, mix your NPC with the Waves plugins. Ta ha! That is going to sound way better than if you didn't use an NPC. The thing that's in common is the NPC though. You feel me? It's not the plugins. It's not the knowledge. It's not the technical stuff. It's using that stuff on technical stuff. In fact, in the box stuff was designed matching. People who have hardware stuff, similar to the point the brother was making about the microphones. Yeah, a Wave Studio. I went to Atlanta and I installed some pirated Waves plugins for the engineer there. Don't judge me. This was a long time ago, 2006 or seven, and he had an SSL console hardware, and he mixed everything with Waves plugins. Although he had hardware, he used his board for the preamps and the inputs and the mixing and stuff. But his effects were all Waves at the time. And um, and I was talking to him about it too. And he explained his logic to me, but he's capturing everything into that board. So even if he's using waves, at some point he's converting that shit to analog tracks, which does the summing for him because his board has a summing G comp on it. You feel me? So it's not true in that sense. It's not. He's not using a laptop. He's using an SSL board with all of its preamps. All of its routing, all that shit that I don't understand yet. So most people in studios, by default, have hardware signal flow, even if the mix flow is in the box. So when they're mixing with the same plugins as you, they're not mixing the same signal as you. And y'all got y'all have to appreciate the levity of a lot of engineers on gear sluts, especially at any time. A lot of engineers on YouTube and Instagram, most of the time, they're leaving something out of the narrative. They're answering the questions like a woman. <laughs> and I sorry, sisters, I don't want to gang up on y'all, but y'all like to talk around shit. People who are perceivably gatekeeping the information or the truth, whether it's conscious or unconscious, they talk around shit. They're like, yeah, man, like all that shit, bro, just spit. Just do this and, you know, your laptop, make sure you have some good this and converters and the headphones. Whoop-de-whoop, man. I was in the hotel and I mixed that record. You mixed the record of what? You mixed your beat in the hotel? You mixed my beat for me in the hotel? Because that wouldn't make sense because you know they can't say that and be that. That can't be true for the price they charge. They want to say that out loud. It will affect their business if they meant that. With their clients, they resample everything first. So every stem that the producer sends out of Free Loops is getting processed individually by some reamping, light compression. Something is happening first. That's all hardware. Even if it's just their sound card and they're, you know, doing the loop thing with whatever little cool box they have to the side, or just a preamp, really. Shit, with the UAD stuff, you can do it with Unison. You could preamp every stem individually loop it out loop it back in go through the preamp stem by stem adding however many decibels of gain to it and then mix that's the truth the vocalist is using a fucking sony c800 a fucking five thousand dollar microphone waves r comp should definitely work r vox should definitely work on that signal Motherfucking, they're taking the drums and throwing it through a parallel of the fucking distressor. Even if you just did that to the bass kick and snare, you have a whole different sound. You have a whole different beat. You don't even have to run every stem through that. If you run any stem through anything before you start the mixing with your little, mis your little fucking shortcut template workflow for your mix assistant engineer, because after all, what are they doing? Just renaming shit and checking sample rates? No, they're fucking processing stems too, dog. Why you think why you think them niggas got so many printed, 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 printed 
tracks at the bottom of their session because someone was going through fucking hardware. I'm tired of these niggas lying like that. And, and it's weird because it's not like a, it's like a lie by omission. It's like they answered the question without considering their actual workflow. And for that reason, I'm always irritated because I can sense when they're deflecting. And it's like, bro, you're a dishonest little fuck. Just because you fucking mixed something on a laptop once before and it was cool. Or the, my, the favorite excuse, like this viral song. Well, before we had TikTok and viral songs were hits. But like the viral hit songs that are show up everywhere. World Star Hip Hop, YouTube, the timeline. Everyone's talking about it. And then the engineer gets an interview and they're like, yeah, I mixed that one on my JBL speaker because I was visiting Atlanta and I didn't get the chance. And at the last minute, we'll, we'll, you know, they tell you this whole story about how you two could just use fucking stock Ableton plugins and get a viral hit song. Even if that is true, even if like, whatever, that's a one off, right? Even if that's an exceptional cir circumstance, they don't do that for the rest of their career. And check this out. They don't do that after they get paid for that. The minute they get paid for whatever that success is, they go ahead and buy the fucking Shadow Hills compressor. When they already have the Plugin Alliance version. Why? You don't sit here and preach to me that we can do this in a hotel with a laptop and stock plugins, but when you get your bag, you buy a real studio. If you don't shut the fuck up. Niggas ain't saying you can't use what you got and release music. No, duh, nigga. That's what... That's what 99.7% of everyone is doing. Of course you can do it. But is the bulk of the material coming out these days to streaming sound like quality mixes comparable to just 10 to 15 years ago? Does any of that shit sound like the Outkast album? No. Does any of it sound like Blueprint? No. Like, so if it doesn't sound like that shit that we love, what does it sound like? It sounds like music, I guess, but it's not that. We grew up with that. We grew up with that standard, with that sound. That's, that, that just stains your whole filter of music. As long as you hear shit that don't sound like that, something's missing. And the thing that's usually missing is hardware. So for that reason, learn everything you can learn technically in the box and do whatever the fuck you want. You ain't got no choice. But at the end of the day, when you get to an elevated awareness of your music and you're like, yo, I actually want my shit to stand out sonically. Like, I just want my shit to be like, unfuckwittable. Because this is where, where the rubber meets the road. Anyone can indeed make a good record in the box. We have fucking Serbian Geneva for crying out loud. His breakout song was um, Britney Spears' Womanizer. He had mixed that in the box. And that shit sound crazy. Because, you know, it was an EDM record. It sounds like, nah, he didn't do that shit in the box. He's like, I swear I did it in the box. But that's the same nigga that mixed on... Um, he, I think he mixed Donnell Jones where I want to be. Which blew my mind. Serbian. Je. I don't know how to spell his last name. Serbian Geneva. Serbs in Geneva. If you don't get your goofy ass mix engineer, Serbian, Serban, Genia. Discography. This nigga mixes in the box, allegedly exclusively. So you got Weekend Records, you got Adele Records. So we know it's possible. There's never been a question of if it's possible. Oh, they don't got it. They got it in this format. I need a list, my nigga. He's a Romanian Canadian. Egypt. Gypsy. Can't say Gypsy no more, but that's what that would be. Music Soul Child, Pink, R. Kelly, Double Up, Throwing Off Thawing, Like I Snake, Ma. Yo, I fucking know Don. I, I know y'all not about to play 
Y'all not about to play Donnell Jones like that and not give him credit for that song because that was a good song. If I'm not mistaken, he did uh, Donnell Jones and Where I Want to Be back when like um, Neo Soul was like coming back. This guy mixed a lot of it. Jill Scott, Music Soul Child, you know the vibes. So if you love that Neo Soul era, you can make the case that you can do what this guy is doing, but then it goes back to the preamps and the capturing of the audio of the artists. They're not, they're not recording in the box. Yo, they really don't have this song here. What the fuck is this? Selected this guy for you? Bitch, if you don't give me the real, dis- if you don't goddamn, if you don't motherfucking get your ass, he doesn't have a full discography. The Neptune's got a wiki with 2,000 songs listed. Serb Jania can't get the goddamn links. There we go. Year by look at 2002. That nigga was busy. Oh my god, his 2022 is bigger than his whole fucking discography. He he really is mixing on a laptop. Look at all these goddamn songs he mixed last year. In 2021, Jesus. Yo. Then it gets shorter by the year. 2017, he had a hell of a run too. 2014, kinda. Ain't that a bitch? He fucking mixed Blurred Lines by Robin Thicke and Pharrell. He mixed it like fucking... He mixed it like motherfucking on Marvin Gaye. Come on now. We getting closer. This man makes a lot of records. A lot of records that matter. Let's go. Missy Elliott? Respect me? Oh, that's when um, all that energy was fading out. No, they playing with me. Rhyme Fest? That's random. A lot of N.E.R.D. She wants to move, but you holding her? You hogging her? Britney Spears, Greatest Hits. Usher Confessions. Ruben Stuttered's album. I must be smoking mids. I could have sworn he mixed for Donnell Jones. I fucking thought so, bitch. Don't play with me. He did. I think this is his second album, though. He makes the first one, too. Am I that old? Is Darnell Jones' song from 1999? I'm about to cry. It ain't. I was about to say. Dave Hollister, one of my favorite R&B songs. We just had Mike City on two or three weeks ago. So he makes some of these Mike City records. He didn't mix the one that I like, though. But yeah, if, you, if you're going to target something like a, a standard of in-the-box mixing, it'll be him. But even in his best of mixes, they don't touch the analog guys. Even my uncle. My uncle is mainly in the box lately. So he did all the dude that just won the Grammy was his name, Steve Lacey. He mixed his whole album. I think he's been mixing all of the Tyler Creator's albums since I fucking hate you, but I love you. That's a that's a badass. I wish it was a Neptune beat type song, by the way. I fucking hate you is what it's called. I-F-H-Y, Tyler the Creator. So from that point forward, is my uncle. Then my uncle does a lot of the nerd albums too. So um, the album that has a Love Bomb on it, that sounds like the Beatles, like that old classic sound. My uncle mixed that. And a few others on that. No, my uncle makes that whole album. He makes the last Earth, Wind, and Fire albums. All that shit. Like, like, and he's a hybrid mixer, in the box, leaning mixer. But none of that shit sounds like the old stuff he did. The early Usher albums. The early TLC albums. Like, fan mail. Not fan mail. Crazy, sexy, cool. Like um, that song, Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls. My uncle mixed that. 
Not in the box. Let's forget about it. Motherfucking, um, did he mix Creep? He mix Creep or the other one, Red Light Special. He mix one of those. He um, mix In Vogue, Don't Let Go. That whole era of radio music. All SSL. All Neil Pogue. R&B from Atlanta. It's all him. Like I said, all the Alchemist albums since the Kim and I. That's him. SSL, SSL. And that's the music that people gravitate towards. They'll be like, yo, that's the stuff that made me get into music. Yo, that's like my favorite album. Like, yeah. Fucking yeah, it is. That new Britney Spears album ain't your favorite Britney Spears album. Let's not do that. But it, like I said, but that's I just show you those examples because, yeah, you can in the box stuff and be very successful. But I just, if we have the option to do the other way, which was more successful, which one do you choose? Keyflow says it's crazy. People don't even know NPCs were using pop beats too. Max Martin had one and Dr. Luke had a 4,000. Why do you think an NPC can only make a certain beat? It's not that people don't think they can only make a certain beat. They're saying on uh, YouTube, the people who have the old NPCs are only making a certain beat. Not that the NPC can't do it. I guess that's Campbell's point too. What did I miss? Shout out to Ralph Bear. I need to start back using my MK1. Ralph says, I can use my MP3. I can use an MPD in Logic Pro. You can. Tupapa says, you get what you put into the MPC ASR. Cool thing about MPC 2000 or light, you can write something, go to your studio, and then go right to stage with the MPC in the synth. That's true. But you can do that with a laptop too. So what are we talking about? King Davis Music's in the building. Ableton Day 2. Not Ableton Day. Don't do that. MG Future, any particular reason you switch between DAWs to Papa? Why do I switch between DAWs? I've, I've answered this perfectly one time before. A version of the answer, because there's several versions for that answer. Answer number one, every DAW is not created equally, sonically. Even feature-wise, I would prefer to fuck around in Ableton for capture mode. FL Studio has a capture, but it's not the same. Neither is Studio One's, right? So some, some, some methods I go about creating require the cool stuff that one DAW does that the other DAW doesn't. Part two, ARA. If I really want to get into my bag and use Melodyne like I'm supposed to, not every DAW treats that nicely. It's actually kind of annoying. Number three, piano roll. So if I don't feel like, like when I didn't have this keyboard, if I don't feel like making beats by hand or, I'm sorry, if I don't feel like using a Kai Mini to play chords, and I'd rather just draw a ninth chord, I know what it looks like. I, I want to go to a piano roll that let me do that, edit that, change it, arpeggiate it, strum it, all that shit. Every doll doesn't do that. Fruity Loops definitely does it, right? And then you know because of Fruity Loops is all two-bar music, then put my 808 in there, I'm out of there. If I know that's the type of beat I'm feeling it's like doing just to get the point across. Um, if I want, like I said, a boom bap beat and I want it to feel and sound like that era, I'm hooking my goddamn NPC up. They ain't no, we ain't got to talk about that. So I jump around to accomplish the sound or method, the workflow that each doll offers ideal for what I'm trying to do with it. Because I'm not using Ableton to do like EDM, future bass, house music, a lot of shit that makes it really cool to that crowd is lost on me. I don't create the way they create, so I don't need all those features. So Ableton has niched in those features, but I haven't niched in that style of production. So for me, Ableton is like a blank canvas with like five things that I like about it. There's no disrespect. It just is what the fuck it is. And I bought plugins leading to that that kind of replaced the new stuff that I've had as a plugin already. But because I have it as a plugin already, why not do it in Studio One? That. Why not do that in Fruity Loops? That. You get what I'm saying? And then hardware stuff. Fruity Loops and hardware are not friends. They're not even close friends. I don't even think they live in the same neighborhood. But you can do it. I've gotten away with using guitar pedals in Fruity Loops. I can go to Zulu in Fruity Loops. I can I can do this in Fruity Loops. But all the delay compensation and the way it cues to record and stuff, it's just harder to visualize. Especially if you understand Pro Tools signal flow or Logic signal flow. You're like, how come the DAW doesn't create a dedicated bus that I can just, you know what I'm saying, the route to and create a new audio track and tell the input bus, you know what I'm saying, like, it's just a different thing. Why did I learn Pro Tools? Because I was a mix engineer trying to record rappers, but I wasn't trying to record rappers because I couldn't 
mix them and record them in Cubase, which I've done for years. Ableton even. Most of the songs I've recorded that I've showed you from all the local rappers, I mixed and recorded everything in Ableton with Voxingo and default Ableton plugins. I can do it. But I wanted to use Pro Tools because I was charging people. And people in my area, especially in slower areas or areas where music culture isn't enhanced plus ultra and shit, a lot of people go to that one local studio who ain't got the right hardware, ain't got the right monitors, but he has an inbox in Pro Tools, so I'm going to spend twice the amount of money as the local hood nigga with better, you know, plugins, better taste, but he doesn't have an inbox in Pro Tools. So once they open up Pro Tools to be um, agnostic to your sound card, I was like, oh, I'm doing sessions. And it worked. People came over, they saw Pro Tools open, whatever. It was like they felt comfortable. So I had to learn it because I'm charging people to record them and they're expecting to be recorded into Pro Tools or even more so. <clears throat> Down here, they do this thing where people can go to a studio, record, but the studios don't mix. And I found that to be very strange and tacky, in my opinion, because in the same two hours they're recording and arranging the song vocally, I'm mixing as I go. And in most times, I did it faster than the studio, because the studio is stretching out time because they're charging per hour. They're charging mixes per hour. The mixes cost more, so the rapper doesn't want to pay all of that, or whatever the case may be, but vice versa. Okay, so you're used to people not mixing for you. I can record it for you, and you can mix, get someone else to mix it later. And then what do they want? They want the Pro Tools session because the nigga may not have Ableton later. You get what I'm saying? So like, there's a whole bunch of different reasons I've learned a bunch of different stuff. But in the inception of when I started, most of the DAWs I learned how to use is because I needed time stretch. Fruity Loops didn't start with time stretch. Acid Pro did. Acid Pro sucked with MIDI. So then Reason. Reason didn't have time stretch yet. So Cubase. Cubase had time stretch, but it sucked at the piano roll. You get what I'm saying? Like, you just be chasing that one thing you're trying to do. And I'm the type of person, I'm going to fucking do it, bro. Like, whatever extra step or doll I need, I'm going to get it. That's fucking Keyflow. Me and Keyflow. I remember when me and Keyflow was on AIM, maybe back in 2010 or less. Like, even before Keyflow in the Gear Sledge version of myself. Before that, me and Keyflow was talking about um, Paul Stretch. Paul Stretch is an indie developed plug-in for Re Reaper or Reaper and or Audacity. And Keyflow was showing me all these examples because this is when Drake was getting hot. So yeah, it's after 2009. I'm talking to Keyflow about it and Keyflow was excited about Paul Stretch or whatever. And I know Fruit Loops ain't got Paul Stretch. So my goofy ass had to download Reaper or Audacity just so I could put a two bar or four bar lo a loop into the Paul Stretch algorithm, export it out, put it back in Fruit Loops until it became a standalone AU or whatever. And that was Mac only. I was on Windows. So it was like a whole bunch of shit. I learned Logic because I switched to Mac, right? And I'm not about to buy $800 Cubase when Mac's Logic Pro costs $99. I might as well fucking learn it. I heard it's like Pro Tools. So it's just time. And, and more importantly, you know, the, the, the last final answer on this question is I've been doing this for 20 years. I can't go a year or two doing the same shit. Mentally, like this is just just how my brain works. Nothing to do musically. Just mentally, I'll get bored when anything becomes too predictable. And then once I get bored or I feel away, then my music sounds away. And I'm like, I need to switch up just so I can breathe fresh air into music. Um, so hopefully that answers it. Beast by Amazon says, just use an analog heat sub. USB? Analog heat um, emulates preamps. That's only half the equation. It doesn't emulate summing, bussing, or glue. So even with like analog heat over USB, which is very crafty because they do audio over USB like Virus does. I think they're the only two companies that really do that. That's dope. That's an easy way to like color your stems. But then how do you glue it together? It's just nuanced though. It's not important that you have to glue it together. I'm just saying. Um, the D-Box, summing is for glue. It's for bringing it all together under the same sound stage. More than, more than the preamp. Music gear, never trade up. You lose cash on the trade. My Ibanez, my Ibanez Tube Screamer goes from $80 to $300 today, 1K. Yeah, my own fucking um, Chase Bliss MK1 Cooper is like $2,000 used. I was like, what the fuck? 
Jay says, my thought is that all frequency, how hard do you want to achieve your desired frequency? That's true. Two Papa says, what sound card do you guys recommend in the 650 price range? Focus, right? If it's not Apollo, it's focus, right? Let's not even, let's not even be cute about it. I like what Behringer is doing for hardware. MJ is so wrong. He says, it makes you think too much. Yeah. Keyflow says, we all pirate it, man. If you didn't grow up rich, <laughs> 590 says, don't judge me. I won't judge you. The new mics are so cool. Steven Slate mic clones are good, too. Keyflow says, that's where Pensado's place used to mess everyone up. He was mixing with good sound sources. <laughs> Ayo Kakanda says, I ran into someone who goes to a studio where people can get certified using a board and hardware. I'm doing it just because I can. I need that sonic palette to expand. Yeah, and if you do have local studios that are willing to teach you or certify you how to use the old school stuff, just do it for fun. Because you can bring your own tracks and fuck around, and especially get a good rapport or friendship with a studio person. You never know. You might fuck around and just get the studio for the weekends, bring your own clients, work with them, get to know the local acts that are actually trying to do music and not just talk about it. Like, that move is going to help you more than the SSL board, I think. EB's in the building was good. Roderick says, I'm here. G Brown says, that makes sense. Haru says, these mixes don't even sound good for the box mix. These mixes don't even sound good for in-the-box mixes. That's funny. Black Ave says, what's good? Joe, he's decorated. N-E-R-D. Jayon says, a lot of those records were recorded into the box through hardware, though. Exactly. Back to one. Jayon says, dang, he must be working 10 days a week. He's the baby face of mixing. Let's talk about it. All of those sweet Motown hits done on a four-track, two-inch rhythm reel. Yes. Prince said... I don't know what that meant. Would you ever use a SP55, 555? Why not? Why wouldn't I use an old SP? I got I got an old SP now. I got the old I got the original. Oh well, no, I don't. I don't have the OG 404. I have an SX404. <laughs> Spec Op 6 says, I'm gonna forever say your biggest flex is using the Akai Mini. That's hilarious. G Brown says, We're in a time where so much comes out daily that it's now about the path of least resistance and cost. Hmm. No, the quality of music isn't to be sacrificed because everyone else is putting out a lot of music. But please don't make that equivalent in your brain. You feel me? That'll fuck you up. It's not cheaper to put music out. Music costs just as much, if not more than it used to for people to care what you're noticing in a lot of the music that's coming out is that a lot of these people are plants and we keep forgetting that. Most of these artists that you hear about like Ice Spice and DDG and whoever, Duck, and all these rappers come and go lately, they are usually published by Empire Records. They're usually part of that 300 management group. And a lot of that stuff is hidden behind management and artist development agencies ran by the people who used to run Interscope or ran by Lucian Grange's son in the case of Takashi 69. Takashi 69 didn't just work hard and go on SoundCloud and release music and people gave a fuck because Pierre Bourne tuned his 808. No, Takashi's fucking right hand man's right hand pots and pans man is Lucian's Gr Lucian Grange's son. Takashi 69 exists because Lucian Grange's son, not because he made a whole bunch of mid-quality music with Pierre SAE college beats. It's because not only did he have a Pierre born beat, not only did he have the bloods with him for the street credit, not only did they do music videos because they could afford to do that, which has a cost, but also because Lucian Grange's son co-signed him. You don't see all of that. So just because the famous people or let's say the oligarchy of the music industry is no longer prioritizing the old workflows and standards, you can't divorce them because the standard of music dropped. The, mu the standard of music didn't drop because those people don't exist. The standard of music dropped because these people own everything else. Like to the point where, yes, a thousand songs released today is cheapening the atmosphere, but for them, they're getting paid for all of them including the ones they don't develop, including the ones they didn't produce, including the ones they didn't sign. So there is no incentive for the industry as we knew it, past tense, and their players,
past tense and gatekeepers past tense, if they make money off of all the songs, why focus energy, time or anything into any of the songs? That's the di that's the discrepancy or disconnect with quality and volume is that they're necessarily playing a numbers game now. That does not mean that you, a person who's trying to come out without any of those octopus arms, should then say, well, let me sacrifice quality and just throw something out there because it seems like that's what everyone else is doing. Everyone else is just doing it because they don't know anything else. But if you know better, you do better. If you can put the time, money, and energy into the quality of your music, necessarily, you're going to get better results. The universe don't give a fuck about none of that other shit. It cares about how much energy and attention and um, how much of you you put into it. And your rewards scale accordingly. Your rewards aren't going to scale better because you released a thousand songs with 10 views. And, and contrapositive, your results may not scale better just because you went to the studio and got an SSL mix with your struggle R&B singer on the hook out of key. It's everything. I'm just focusing because of the nature of my channel and the equipment and stuff on the sonics part or the technical parts of theory, arrangement, and just repetition of showing you the different ways to do the same thing. But at the end of the day, it's not cheaper. You know what I'm saying? You're going to save on not spending $5,000 on hardware. How much money do you really think you need to get on radio? Let's say you had the perfect song, the perfect artist, perfect workflow. Everything in the box. It sounds good enough. Sounds just like everybody else on SoundCloud. How do you stand out from everybody on SoundCloud then? By putting money into radio. Where I live, and I live in a, like not even a high volume market, but it's um one of those places that where the main radio station dominates most of the area, direct line to Clear Channel. It's a Clear Channel region, right? So all the new artists and all the people being pushed by the plant system, you hear them here. Too many times a day. But for a local artist to go to that same radio station for medium rotation, they don't even offer it. They say to you, well, we can get you on the radio and get you in front of people, maybe to direct traffic to your album or event. But that's $20,000 for a 30 to 60 second fucking radio edited clip. Hey, guys, this is K97 point blah, blah, blah. And you now listen to tunes of MG the Future. And they play a little five-second clip from my fucking CD Baby release. I'm like, hey, get it now at MGTheFuture.com. And they may play that five fucking times. That's $20,000, though. So, like, when people start talking to me, like, they're in the music. And this is what I'm saying. Don't take none of this personal. I'm just, I'm vamping out of everything I've heard from people. All types of people, too. Y'all not all the same person. But a lot of people I hear this shit from. It just be on some shit like, yeah, I'm not going to invest in myself and this and that and blah. Whatever. I don't care. I'm not going to buy these plugins. I'm going to pirate this and that, blah. We got something to get out. We got something to say, blah, 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 blah. Oh, my producer, my beat maker has such a blah, blah, blah. Yeah, oh, that's cool. That's everyone's fucking story. And no one knows that story more than a producer and engineer. Because we hear it from you times 100 more times from everyone else. And you kind of get this net or web of what the general narrative is based on the information that the community has gleaned from interviews, magazines, hearsay, mostly hearsay, mostly chatter from the 90s that no longer applies, right? But they all think you can um, mitigate and minimize all the costs on the production side. And I don't mean producer, beat maker. I mean production side, microphone, preamp, quality. They think you can cut all those costs and have whatever costs they are imagining they're going to have for a music video, press run, a motherfucking publicist, motherfucking to pay the DJs to host it. Who, who do they go to? I, I hate when people, never mind, I'm not even going to say that. Uh, the go-to local DJ, right? Whatever, they're going to charge you hundreds if not thousands of dollars to get the record to nobody. Because they ain't got the juice like that, but they still charge you that much because of their name and how much work they put in for 20 or more years, right? But... Them playing it for people and you playing it on SoundCloud is going to be the same amount of results today. So, like, people are willing to pay for that. People are willing to pay for clout. People are willing to pay for the conversation that happens after they pay for dumb shit for when some other person who loathes even less asks them, hey, what you been up to? Man, I just dropped a new song, bro, and DJ Chuck T hosted the tape. It's going up. We about to perform at the fucking Armory in the city outside of Charlotte, 
yo, we're taking pictures, Instagram is going up. And I tell a lot of artists all the time, I said, when you start doing these performances especially, make sure you document it like a movie. Make sure you have the B-roll or behind the scenes, especially when you introduce yourself to other artists and local talent because you never know which one of you may blow up and you have the original footage when y'all met. Like, I tell everyone to do this shit like a documentary or a movie. No one fucking does that, though. They'll, they'll do a few footage of them on stage and you can't hear what they're saying and no one's looking at the crowd to see the response. But everyone kind of half-asses it, even still, and all the money they save when it's time to deliver, they're still half-assing half the protocol. After you do all these performances and you make more money, then you work on your social media content. Then you work on your little 10-minute YouTube documentary so our people know who the fuck you are and what you're about somehow. Because it's not going to come across in the same beat and the same lyrics that everyone else has. Shit, the most, the most important thing you could probably invest in now as a fucking artist is a fucking 4K or better camera. And to get as much shit and stabilized video edited as you can and send it to AI to edit it and send it to Fiverr to color grade it and fucking put the fucking lower thirds and transitions in. Like, that's probably the most important thing because we're in a world where everyone's staring into a black crystal glass. So your image is the most important thing. Now, does, does that shit get cheaper? Do cameras get cheaper? Do cameras, you know what I'm saying? Can you get a cheap camera with without in image stab stabilization? Anyone who takes pictures know what the fuck I'm talking about. That's how people talk about fucking audio. They talk about it like if you're a photographer, you know the difference between a camera with stabilization and a camera without it. Now, most people say, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to pay half for a good quality 4K camera without stabilization. And I'm not going to spend another half of that for a gimbal. I'm going to no gimbal. No stabilization and no um, fucking appropriate lens size so that when you zoom in and zoom out, it doesn't get even more shakier. People in audio are saying, fuck all those things to give me the best quality image. I'm just going to put it into DaVinci Resolve and let the AI try to stabilize it because that's what everyone uses. And that's the quality of stuff I'm going to put out there. That's good enough. That's how niggas sound to me when they do this music and beat shit. That's stupid. If you understand that metaphor as a photographer, you understand how stupid that is. That's why people end up getting the Sony cameras. More than anything, beautiful lenses, sure. Color profile, whatever. But in image stabilization, because we're doing fucking video now. We're in a video era. That's $10,000 easy money. Fucking around taking fucking wedding photos of people who are about to get divorced in two years. Get what I'm saying to you? Like, you, the cost is always implied somewhere. Okay, you didn't, you didn't buy a $20,000 studio, but you're about to run a $20,000 ad for the one song you did in the box on a laptop in a hotel room. Does that make sense energy-wise? None of it makes sense, and that's my point. All of it's cap, because we're in a paradigm where everyone, everyone is talking, and, and it's not to say that anyone should be silenced, but you don't see... When everyone's talking, it's hard to see who knows what they're talking about. And that's all I want to say on that subject. I'm off of it. It's, it's going to raise my blood pressure. Oh, Lord Jesus. Jayon Baby says, reason still sucks at time stretching. <laughs> Two Papa says, what, draw back, what drawbacks, difficulties do you encounter with Studio One? MIDI. Keyflow says, yup, audacity. Spec Ops says, the master, the master and Quarter Pro. Jay says, Noisia uses Paul Stretch, too. I never heard of that. Pro Tools, Vocals, Gold Standard. Audacity, cool to make loops on. Would I ever use a 555? Yeah. Ditto. I use three different dolls, but I find myself making beats in FL. It stops me from overthinking. There you go. Uncanny Telepathy. The name, Uncanny Telepathy. <laughs> I just copied the D-Box Plus last week. There you go. Squirrel work for FL. Isn't that interesting? I did not know that. At 50 years old, I've lived through it all, and I recognize the difference in sound from then versus now. I'll rephrase it. The price point now allows those who couldn't afford gear way back then to afford software now. Yeah. Trust me, I love music and listen to it. I get it. G. Brown says he gets it. Oh, no, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not targeting you as the person, because I know most of you guys have this experience, too, especially if you found me. The pushes. Real great music downward also makes it harder for now than to, than to be heard. Sort of. Because we got to get out of the paradigm too that just because so much music is coming out 
and it seems like they're getting all these farm plays, you may run the risk of thinking that normal people who listen to your music is automatically listening to all the other music. Most people are not listening to the new music. So although they have the apps, and although they may get curious, and although the younger kids may let the playlist run, although the people in college may let the playlist on YouTube run, they're not going there for that artist that just came out to listen to all 60 minutes of their music and then making a judgment on the quality of that music. Your listener is different now. Your listener has more options, but more options means they're making less choices. Like I said, this is an energy thing. The, anytime you try to game the system somewhere, you create, a, um, you create a ripple or problem somewhere else. So yeah, tons of money, tons of music, tons of ways to monetize anything that comes out because they're getting paid from subscriptions. Most people can afford this subscription, whether it's $5, $15, just to listen to their favorite classic music. And then once in a while, Beyonce drops, they'll jump on that for a night, say what they want on Facebook and Twitter, and they'll never listen to that shit again unless it shows up on a playlist. So you got to understand your listener is different. Whereas 10, 20, 30 years ago, and I'll say 30, especially the 90s, where I feel like it was the best commercially for us, Sonic. So when the, Son when the um, Sonics and the commercialism had a nice little marriage, even with all the industry politics and things that we're going to learn later, that music was really fucking good. And it sounded really fucking good compared to just the 80s. And then the commercialism of it was really good. Like putting it into the music countdowns, radio, sales, and physical copies of vinyl, CD, cassette. You remember back then, like, you have a book of CDs that you bought until you can burn some. But even during the burning age, a lot of people had a lot of bought CDs still. And you'd be in the car at a red light, reaching into the back seat or asking the kid in the back seat to scroll through 50 pages of plastic CD sleeves to find one CD to play two songs. Think of all the time and energy and money in that transaction. Then you get to, oh, YouTube, little Uzi Vert play. It's so, it's because it's so fast, because it's so automatic, you kind of take it for granted. The novelty is off a little bit. So that song doesn't have that much... Uh, you didn't go through as much to hear that song as the as a fan now. You didn't go through as much to hear the song. The creators aren't going through as much to make the song. So the songs don't mean that much. Whereas if you had to stand outside of FYE or Sam Goody or something, and you hope that that song is available for purchase because it didn't sell out like it used to do. Digital social media, nothing sells out. You're never caught the next day at school or the next day at work or the next day at the kickback without the CD no more. Everyone's heard it. Shit, most people heard it before you these days. But back then, you needed the bootleg or you needed to stand in line. So there's a value just in the expression and exchange. There's a value of like, it took me an hour to buy this. I had to sit in my car and hit play on a cassette tape. There's no skip. There's no ads. There's no curator telling you which three songs to listen to first. You put the tape in and let it go. You put a CD in, you let it go. You, you, there's a different connection to that. And then the quality is there too. So you're entrenched longer in better quality music, thus you're attached to better quality music, even if it's subconscious. Now, what I'm suggesting to people is that though we are in a cookie cutter phase and the real money is in the subscription, not the number one song no more. That's the biggest difference in this industry which is probably why we're not going to get superstars under that model from them. A superstar can be born and rise with their own money, but generating a superstar is stupid when you calculate the energy it would cost to do that versus where you're monetizing the actual streams at. It just, I'd rather have a thousand songs streaming than one song streaming a thousand times. That's just the way that model tries to balance itself. But essentially, it'll crash. Because as you're wearing people out with mids music, which they have been, more and more people are going to unsubscribe from streaming services because they don't need access to millions of gigs of struggle music. They just need the classics and the hit songs. That could be satiated by playlists on YouTube, 
that could be satiated by any other type of uh, model that's necessarily going to rise to help people find better music in general. Even on Instagram, I noticed a trend. It's like hybrid TikTok Instagram where people be like, video number 56. I always catch them in the 50s. They're on video 56. Um, Lo-fi house chill tunes you've never heard of. And they're just playing 15 seconds of the song while they're narrating it with their ugly face in the video, right? Like that type of shit. Those people is how people find good music. They're the DJs now. They're not even playlist creators. They're niggas with TikToks who are curating, oh, you never heard this drum and bass banger before here. Like, that's how people are finding tunes because those channels are getting way more viewers and followers as as them as curators or tastemakers. They don't know how to make a fucking beat. They don't know how to hit a, a Q button on a Pioneer. They're just showing you music they listen to. You get what I'm saying? And then someone copies them and changes it up. Then the Spotify algorithm, shout out to Hazel and that fucking music IO shit she was working on. Now Spotify, I think, is who she sold it to. Now the AI can match similar songs like that. And oh my God, you just need someone to get you started. So that's where the value in the humans are in that equation. It's not because a whole bunch of people are putting out music and making music. That doesn't mean that people are accepting that. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. All those things are true, but it's not true that everyone gets to hear it. It's not true that everyone cares. It's not true that everyone's making money significantly. It's, it's, it's not true that this model can sustain on the artist side of the equation. It, it hasn't, never has, and it never will. The best that people hope for is that they game the system with the right DJ, playlist, curator, influence, secret deal, management. What is that called? Soda something? What is that shit where you can find uh, something soda? It's the um, database that they're using, that the industry is using to find out who's trending. Like, it's, it's bad. I don't think it's going to sustain itself, though. Something soda. Soda Tone. Tomorrow Superstars Discovered Today. Understand and visualize an artist's potential to find out first about the next big thing. Powered by AI and structured data across millions of artists and billions of songs and videos. So what they have done, which is ingenious, by the way, is convince everyone to upload everything that they're doing at whatever quality so that we can create the database, the neural net, the fucking um, metadata, whatever we need to fucking crunch these things with an algorithm, not even people in ears no more. We can crunch these metrics just based on pattern recognition. And then based on what the pattern is suggesting, then we can zoom in and email and contact these artists that show up through the algorithm. And then put some money behind that to make it seem like they're an artist and not a person that's just uploading everything from their phone. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's not even... It's not even that. You're just feeding the computer at this point. We're not getting closer to being signed. We're not getting closer to being discovered and noticed. If anything, we're creating the bottom of the pyramid to exalt even whacker shit, honestly. Because the funny thing about this method of using AI to detect things based on curations and patterns is if the AI is following the tastes and trends of young people, young people have no frame of reference to quality music per se. It's, I'm sure it's subjective in someone's brain, but not really. If they, if they don't have the taste of a person from before or generations before when we're having this conversation about quality, they don't care about that. So the AI isn't going to detect that. And then eventually, if you just put out too much AI sorted fuckery because you're following the learned behavior of fuckery and listeners you're only going to be feeding your label and your chosen plants to make more fuckery, which is probably what the female drill artists are suffering right now. They're so bad, it's terrible. Lyrically, it's bad music, bro. It's not, it's not like because the words are bad. It's because lyrically, it makes no sense. The quality is terrible. 
literally sounds like laptop recordings with like some really cool plugins to make the voice pop, but then the beat is muddy. You don't hear all the percussion. And they're like, yo, this is what's going hot in New York right now, the Bronx, the female drill artists. I was like, let me guess. The AI analyzed a bunch of drill beats. Ooh, novelty fucking there. And then you took some fucking chat GPT lyrics from Meg the Stallion, Little Kim, and Adina Howard. And then you tell this person with a sixth grade vocabulary to just follow in between the lines and then put all that on the white boy desk and the engineering side of things. And it says, it doesn't matter what it sounds like. Just put it out. Watch it work. And it's like, what in the reverse cliff high are you niggas doing the music? That's not how I would use the AI, but I would use the AI to help me make better music, but whatever, whatever, whatever. So this is the website. This is the quote unquote future. And this is the death blow to their damn self. I find it ironic. Spec Ops says, and they go through all, they tell you all that and act like they're trying to put you in the game. <laughs> Good morning to dopamine. Rad Rod, I see you if you're still there. Two Papa says, yo, those Goody Mob Outcasts organized joint joints hit, noise joints hit hard. Have you heard the snare on Bombs Over Baghdad? I still don't know how he did that. Slate is the only sub I'd consider. Jay said, I must like, um, I must go, but I like the idea of documenting their journey. I'll start doing that too. It'd be cool. Have a good day, everyone. Shout out to you. The CD days felt better. Mm -hmm. G Brown said, that's when people knew their music. I still, ride, I still ride around controlling what I listen to. Two Papa says, MIDI in Studio One, is it the timing issue or an editing? Both for me. Ch David Charleston B says, the good old days. Johnny Johnny A says, most don't look at other places. Game music, intro music, stream, ending, ad music. Yeah, I was just talking about, um, you talking about syncing, like where to get your music placed and sync and stuff, or even uploading it to the YouTube database. I was thinking about getting into that. I need to learn the, the format for it all the way. But yeah, that is a cool thing, and that's where most of the money is for beat makers right now. For sure. But because of that, it's gatekeeped worse than all the other stuff. So good luck. You just making beats and uploading them to fucking taxi ain't gonna do it. It's just like the music industry. You need to get in touch with a representative, an artist manager, a curator, a playlister. It's the same thing. The same way you try to break your lo fi beat to get on YouTube and Spotify is the same way you take that same lo fi beat and try to break it to CBS and NBC. It's way better if you're in contact directly and not through the middleman. And the fucked up thing with the sync game. Is that a lot of the middlemans are middlemans for the middleman. They're not direct to agency ever. They collect all the tracks, go through their curation prior to AI, their own people listen to it, they pick a batch and they submit it to the opportunity itself. The problem is five different music libraries can be pitching to Coca Cola. So you have five, let's say it's Five by five, because I don't think the music director at Coca-Cola gives a fuck that much. So 25 tracks. So each agency represents five songs. Each of these five songs represent five different artists. So it's 25 different artists being submitted just from these five to get into the Coca-Cola commercial. And one of them went. The other 24, you almost made it. But when you go to each platform individually, easily they have over 5,000 submissions each. You have to be able to seed your way through that. And a lot of times when you get a no, it's not even a no. They, didn't even just, they just didn't even get to your song yet. And a lot of times, even when you submit stuff to artists and stuff, and you know they post their email in the fucking Instagram story like Glorilla just did, they don't even get a chance to listen to all that shit. So you try to catch them with the emojis in this title or whatever, or you just hope to be the first to send it so it's at the... You know, if they decide to go chronologically, you're there. Just like when they used to make you stand up in school and sort by last name. It, you, you're using these systems and they're, and they're shitty systems for you. Every, everything's a lottery ticket, bro. Just because there's less saturation or more money doesn't make that angle. Um, it, it, it doesn't mean nothing, I guess. It just doesn't mean nothing. The same energy and karmic that you need to get placed in the industry is the same energy and karmic you need to get placed in the sink in the, in the sense that where it matters for you, where it changes your life. It's the energy that changes your life. It's not the pathway that you channeled it per se. 
But if you want to get into sync and you want to get into streaming, then you need to start studying those beats. They're not the commercial beats. They're not the all the beats we upload to YouTube either. They're formatted a very specific way. They have a very particular sonic palette on top of that. And their arrangements are way different. Their versions, their timing, the zinger at the end, all this stuff is not hard to learn, by the way. But you have to be focused on that because you're competing with people who understand that more than they understand Murder Beat's favorite hi-hat. Which is why a lot of that shit, especially on game day and like television that's aimed towards urban reality or sports, a lot of that shit still sounds like old Scott Storch and Neptune Beats. None of you never been listening to like, hmm. Oh, I think that's Metro Boomin. Like, though Metro Boomin's using the NBA with mask off and stuff like that. But that's because that song was such a viral phenomenon. Not because of the beat. No disrespect to the beat, I'm just saying. Like if it was 25 of those beats, it, would, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter if it was Metro's or not. What matters is Metro did it with Future, and that was a big song for you know commercialism. So, um, The more you start to understand the way... You don't want to understand... The hardest thing as a beat maker or an artist is that we spend way too much time understanding how artists feel and think about things. I don't think we poured enough significance to how the actual people who use the music that they buy from you think and feel about it. They're way less connected to the process. So they, like this conversation today is useless to a music supervisor at fucking Fortnite. He doesn't care that I have a D-Box or a machine or NPC. He might say that to build small talk, but when it comes to business, it's like, okay, well, we need these type of songs at these tempos, this feeling. And then they start using adjectives we don't use. You know, like different types of keywords and shit and keywords for a, a cue for a jingle happy go lucky you know mopping the floor and shit and you're like the fuck what so what drum kit do you want me to use you get what i'm saying you have to like become a polygot almost and understand that all this nigga is really saying is get the fucking libraries from project sam symphobia and use the motherfucking ukulele guitar with whatever that fucking chime or whatever bell is and write that in C major. Get your little funky drum loop for rock drums or that style of drumming live drums from fucking Splice and arrange it with like change ups every four bars, a minute and a half and fucking make sure you mix it or gain stage it at the very least and send it on in. Like all them fucking words you use ain't got shit to do with shit, bro. But they don't know that because they don't make beats. Uh, and a lot of people who teach you how to do this stuff, they don't even they don't they don't even think about it like that. It just becomes part of their pattern or routine, or their gatekeeping, unconsciously. They're not saying, I'm I've because I watched plenty of those videos. They never say like, yo. I don't use Omnisphere on this, <laughs> not because Omnisphere doesn't have good sounds, but because the cues they have their own paradigm of sound and you figure out what that is by figuring out what the best people who get the most placements doing cues do you find them their names in the credits you go to their instagram and you just look at their studio and if you're lucky you'll see their desktop when they're working you'll see what program they're in and if you're luckier they'll go live and you ask them what vst they like and you're going to notice it's similar to the rest of us but it's, it's what works for what they're doing. And just keep that in mind. I don't know. I just wanted to share that with people. Because you're not just making a lateral split because that's where money is. If it was hard for the thing that was already hard to get money, imagine what the niche stuff is. You think they're just going to let you in because you decided you don't want to chase placements no more? A lot of people have that attitude. Like, this year, I'm going to get into VH1. And it's like, you should, yes. Definitely pursue that. But the difficulty did not change. The minimum requirements are still the same. That's it. It, it, it don't go no further than that. Johnny J says an AI doll will be the next thing. Well, yeah, we've kind of seen that when Isotope is leaning into that currently. Gianna says, I can't remember the last time I heard everyone playing the same album in their car everywhere I went. Yeah, when, um, when Jay-Z came out, 
before Blueprint. I remember being in 19, was 98, 99. I guess he was doing soundtracks. Like, Hey Poppy and stuff came out. Man, you couldn't, you couldn't turn a street in Roselle, New Jersey without somebody in that age group in their car when they had the big sound systems. That they were playing that song to death. Every turn, every corner. When 50 Cent in the club came out and I was in Camden, I was between Camden and um, that region of New Jersey. Everybody was playing 50 Cent. Like everybody, like roll down the window, it's playing. Turn on the radio, it's playing. Walk down the street in the hood, it's playing. Like that paradigm of music is gone. Younger people have no fucking clue. Like they were like, yeah, you know, they, 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 they of people are anonymous screen names, half of which are bots, the other half are foreign, and everyone's having the same conversation based on the algorithm pushing the conversation together, and it gives you a distorted view of reality. It's weird. It's better in some cases, but then it's weird when you use it to formulate your plot. If you don't understand the algorithm and know what it is, you can't manipulate it. You can't create for it, even with the advent of AI tools. If you don't understand ultimately what Spotify is listening for, it don't matter what hacks you have if you keep making the wrong thing. If the thing you're making doesn't even trip wire the algorithm that's scouring for you, you won't, you won't even make it because there's no human to listen. You'll just be in a room by yourself. And I think that's the scary part about all of this. Like the real threat to all of it, the fact that they're removing the human isn't because you can't get better and you don't make good stuff. It's because... You don't even have niggas listening no more. Computers don't hear your song. So they found traits. They found characteristics. They found maps. To, to And if your song doesn't include a pattern that triggers those maps, you're, it don't matter what you make no more for commercial success on that level without your own money. I mean. So you might as well, you know, as a producer, as a beat maker, for us, do everything you possibly can fucking reels on Instagram, YouTube previews, TikTok breakdowns of your favorite plugins, motherfucking alternative arrangements for the sync library you choose or get invited to. You got to do all of that, bro. ChatGPT makes you do your fucking shit that used to take 30 minutes and 30 seconds. That doesn't mean it's easier. That just means that task is done faster, which means that next 14 and a half minutes, you got to do another task. Because you translate all that to energy. What is the minimum energy behind this thing? Time is just one way to spend energy. Focus is another way to spend energy. The creation, the mastery, the skill, the tools, the investment. These are just all placeholders for energy, energy, energy. This person put a lot of energy into this. I can tell. It could be a lot of bad energy. It could be a lot of positive energy. It could be a lot of wrong energy. It's more subtle. We got to... Over time, you develop this. This is not something you teach somebody who just learned how to make beats, though. If you're just learning how to make beats and you've been making beats under five years, fuck what I'm talking about. This is what happens when you make beats too long and you're trying to accomplish something else or you're trying to be part of the commerce in a digital revolution where AI is screening your audio without ears. When you start thinking like that and wondering like that, then you get to a point where you're like, oh, I know what this shit wants. I can't even tell you the shortcut how to figure it out. It's actually common sense, but it will not come up in these other YouTube videos. Nope, nope, nope. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to share it out loud. It just, it, th th that, this phenomenon with AI is going to, it's not going to make music better. I'm talking about commercial music. It's not going to make commercial music better. If anything, it's going to cause a commercial music collapse because the humans are going to get tired of the, uh, the fixed point results that they're going to generate. Because even the prompters who are looking for stuff, they're younger now. When we were kids making this, when I was 15 years old, the music director was 40, maybe older. So his influence in music is from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So when he listens to the new thing is, he understands I'm channeling hip-hop, R&B, and soul. So I have a resonance with him because of his childhood. The music directors today are like 30, 25. They were born in 1998, 2000. So if they heard all that cool shit that you did that resembled Mary J. Blige, they have fucking no idea. Their mother didn't make them clean the bathroom listening to the best of fucking Anita Baker on Sunday. 
they have no resonance to that shit. So you're sampling that shit, interpolating that shit, AIing that shit. Who cares? Your musical director is 20 years old right now. He's 25 right now. He grew up listening to 2016 freshman class of Double XL. Little Uzi Vert, 21 Savage, that shit. Juice World. Way different experience. We keep forgetting we're getting older. Meaning the people in these positions are different people. Completely different. It's not even a black or white thing. Even that's curious. When you get into like black people taste and white people taste. On commercial side of things. You got people who don't even know the classics. Who get hired because they went to college. Or nepotism or whatever. They had a cool Spotify playlist. Where they stole all their ideas from Reddit and fucking Twitter already. But they got noticed for it. They got picked up for it. They can't, they can't weasel out an ear out what the fuck quality is on that um, fifth dimensional plane. They have no fucking clue. It's not even in their subconscious mind because they never listened to it before. You get what I'm saying? You're not just competing against that. So now you got these niggas the ones generating the prompt and standard for the AI system, which makes them even more lazier. They have to know even less because as long as this AI does what it's supposed to do, they can find matches that are surprisingly good quality compared to their own taste. And if the taste isn't good to begin with, then how hard is it to impress? And in their brains, they think they're scouring millions of songs today, when in reality is the AI is too lazy to sort through all of those. So it's going to sort through the top. It's going to sort through popularity and heat rising. And then it's going to be 100 songs dumbed down to five. And all 100 of those are mids compared to the bottom thousand that don't even reach but that doesn't matter because they have a job to do. <laughs> like, yeah, you got to think about this. You think like that. You go through the scenarios. You change your perspective as you, the beat maker, who wants money from someone and then puts you in the mind state that you're the someone looking for a beat maker to give money to. What you as the someone looking for a beat maker to give money to is different than how you feel and what you think as a beat maker making the beat. You have to jump into that brain real quick and be like, What's the average music scout about? What did they grow up on? What city are they from? That's another thing, too. When you go on Indeed and stuff, and you find these music directors, even if you don't necessarily make contact with them, you just start noticing patterns like, oh, this person's in New York. This person's in Vegas. This person's in San Diego. This person's in Miami. And you're like, oh, shit, they're headquartered or their their domicile is in the cities. You know what I'm saying? So you can assume a few things. How old are they? Is it male or female? These days, it's usually females, which is even easier for a dude to approach, right? Or red pill, blue pill, still pill, right? But whatever, right? There are a lot of these people, especially in the mainstream music industry, are female a now. They have a totally different ear than us. But you can grasp a lot from a female, right? Like I said, find her on Instagram. You're going to see what club she went to. Cause that's all they post their outings, their brunches, the who's who that they know that doesn't matter, but that's their, that's what they choose to pr produce for content. Cool. Now I know where you like to go eat. You're a music person. The place you like to go eat plays music. Who's the DJ that works there when you go there? All right, cool. It's all Instagram. Now I go on Instagram. I find a DJ that's at that location. I can click on the location that you went to eat and it'll show me everyone that posts. Maybe in some of those posts, people are letting the music play in their posts. Then I can hear the type of music that's influence, influencing my A&R person. And she doesn't even know I fucking exist. You have to think like that. Because if you can go like, oh, she likes going to this place to drink every Friday. She's listening to house music or some shit. And the DJ that does this, he gets all his house music from France. It seemed like I went to his Twitch to see him do like a 60 minute stream and I skimmed through it. And I noticed like all the shit that he gravitate towards as a musician, so to speak, is kind of like using these sounds and these type of tempos. And it feels like this. So I can imagine when he practicing at home for his Twitch and Instagram live, that's what he's he's practicing for the actual restaurant or the club. So I know she's listening to this. What do you think you send her? The best of Scott Storch type beats from 2003, nigga. Nigga, I would sample every fucking thing that DJ fucking did. Nigga, I don't even try to create it from scratch. 
I'd be like, oh, this nigga is simple. Oh, okay, okay, okay. La, 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 dot AI. Okay, okay. Give me two bars here, four bars there, four bar everywhere, everywhere. And then make enough beats just like that and send it to her ass for the off chance that the universe acknowledged the fact that I did my homework and it finally gets to her inbox and I type in the right words into the fucking... Matter of fact, you can get ChatGPT to, to fucking write you a, a cold... Matter of fact, let me show y'all niggas, see? See, they're not going to teach y'all this. See, y'all, y'all niggas who stick with me for three, for three hours, y'all get the real sauce. Everybody else wants to get this shit real quick in three minutes so we can make them rich. For three in three minutes, like if you take your impatient, take your impatient ass on somewhere. You ain't never gonna make money. Fuck out of here. It don't matter how long this video is. You weren't gonna make it anyway with that fucking energy and work ethic. But anyway, what I wanted to show you because I'm in this um, mind frame is that like let's say you don't know what to say to her. Can you help me create a cold call message to a music? A and R for urban So if you don't know what to send a music director, industry person, hot girl who's twenty seven about to hit the brick wall, but she still wants to place little Uzi beats, this is the message. Hello, a r My name is this. I'm a singer, rapper, producer, etc. in the urban music genre. And you can change these to be more natural to you, which you really are. I came across your name while doing research on top a r professionals in the industry. And I was impressed with your work. And then you can name your favorite project that she managed or helped out with. If you want to know what they help out and manage with, it's on their Instagram and Twitter. I wanted to introduce myself and my work and see if you might be interested in listening to my latest project. Here it is. I believe would be a great fit for your label, and I would love to discuss potential opportunities for collaboration. If you have some time, I'm grateful for a chance to chat more about my music and explore how we might be able to work together. So you keep in the frame. It's not about them, it's about you. Let me know if there's a convenient time for a call or if you'd like to prefer to communicate via email. Thank you for your time and consideration. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Best regards, boom. Um, can you give me an email subject? For this message so so in case you're not doing instagram and linkedin and you send an email you want the email to stand out sure here is a few email subject options you have for this message introducing your name urban music artist collaboration opportunity your name urban music artist new urban music project from your name seeking a r feedback your name latest urban music release would love your input so if you're not doing urban you're doing lo-fi you're doing hyper pop you just substitute your name, urban music artist seeking a r representation. Those are the top five ever scoured through the database of ChatGPT and internet, right? So, 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 so. Let's not pretend you don't have this for free. Let's not pretend like you don't, you can't do this. But what I'm saying is at the end of the day, which you end up sending them in case this does work, is going to be more important. The AI of you picking the songs you make and send is way more important than the AI of getting them to open it. And this is hard by itself. Getting these words right, getting this right is hard by itself. But then the real, the real, the real science is how to use the same type of, I guess, research method. I guess we're kind of like a think tank for real, for real. Like all the shit that I be talking about is really on some deep, deep state CIA level understanding fucking uh, industries and fucking third world countries type shit. It really feels like that. I really feel like this is some DOD shit. There's a there there. But um, yeah. You got it. Marquis says blue pill me. Sounds like the same problem Hollywood has. You got it. Inner Dragon says, everything going to sound even more the same. You got it. Johnny A says, how the AI got it going to do a Muddy Water guitar solo? It can't. You got it. James Reduce says, I know I'm in the right place when you say stuff like my mom had you cleaning the bathroom listening to Anita Baker. Listen, I was raised by a father, so imagine. My dad had me 
cleaning the bathroom like his grandmother was his my grandmother his mother was still raising him through me like he was he was channeling her for me and I was like we didn't have to live like this this is the 90s y'all did that in the 70s why are we doing that now but thank god I know how to clean the bathroom I guess and that's useful it's, it's surprising how many people don't clean their bathroom no disrespect to nobody but a lot of people well shit I'm talking about it I need to clean my bathroom too but a lot of I've been to a lot of places where people obviously didn't get the Anita Baker cleaning the bathroom skill trait. It was weird, actually. Because my dad was threatening. My dad was, listen, my dad threatened me, I guess, you know, vicariously through his mother. My dad was threatening me like, yo, if you don't know how to clean a bathroom and do dishes and shit, you know, you'd be like the strangest person in your friend group. And then I fucking grow up and like nobody in my friend group really give a fuck about cleaning like that. They're not all nasty or dirty people, but it's not like, you know what I'm saying? They weren't grading me. You feel me? Like, yo, every, anytime someone walk into my space, they're like, did you just move in? It's like, nah, I don't use this room. So I keep it clean because I don't fucking use it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. It's weird. It's very fucking, it was, Lord have mercy. Don't get me to lying. What type of struggle beat do I want to make? Do I have AI to help me pick which struggle beat is out? Riverside, St River Drive Studios says, ooh, nasty. You say that twice. Um, What style of urban music is trending on Spotify uh, lately? Oh, they didn't give them databases to the music databases yet. Can you fucking imagine when they do plug this bitch into the things that humans are doing? Like, not just music, but like video games, like Twitch. Like, what are humans doing? What are humans making? Like, this don't even do that yet. This don't even do that yet. But the top five musical categories that exist currently is trap music, Afrobeat, drill music, reggaeton, grime. So obviously a lot of this, you know, what's interesting about this though, this whole list that it referenced for the, it's database is international music. Reggaeton, of course, with the Caribbean and below, grind music, UK and Europe, drill music can be both, Afrobeat, do we need to go no further, and trap music, which is kind of like, it's us, but it's going to them because the other genres are doing trap in those genres. So trap is still trapping. I don't know, bro. What would I make? I don't know. Do I know how to do Afrobeat still? y'all niggas but I'm bringing back Timberland and the Neptunes I'm tired I'm just gonna bring I'm bring back I'm bringing them back they, they don't want to do this music no more that's fine I'll do it I'll do it for them only have like three buses so I'm not gonna use too many sounds on this beat I want to channel the eight sounds of many fresh wisdom. The Donde Esta is... Where's the Donde Esta? And I'm, I'm making this beat to send it through the uh, D-Box, by the way. Uh, so it's not like a fully arranged... Or maybe... I don't know. Let's see how much I feel it. If I feel it, I'll arrange it. If I don't feel it, I'll just do an eight-bar loop. Because you'll still get the point. Sonically. Valopes. Give me some timbo... Give me some, some saucy timbo drums.
Indian loops. There we go. We make our little sync placements. I just need the chord progression. I can do that. I can do that. I just need the chord progression. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Dangerous pulse. There we go. They're different. Oh, it's one theme. How many themes are there? There's five themes? Okay. Which one do I like the most? Stop playing. Mm, it's too hollow for my style. I always want to use those type of drums, but I never make good beats with them. Let's not even waste my time. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm going to show you. Uh, just make your own one shot. <laughs> I only need one. Wagwan. I can't wait to learn how to do all this on machine again. Jesus Christ. This is exactly how I'm gonna work for the rest of the year. I'm not I'm not figuring out shit. I guess we could use the symbol. Is it a whole symbol or is it a symbol loop? Just a whole ass symbol for no reason. Let's go. So these alternate basically is what they're telling me. There's it's not one open hi hat, it's two open hi hats. What in the Atlanta producer trying to stand out pattern do I gotta do here? Tell me you got Timberland Shaker somewhere. I'm tired of not having his shaker. You got his damn shaker somewhere. I know you got his shaker. You got to have it. That's funny. I have a shaker like that. My favorite bell swoon shaker percussion is that. It's the same model of a shaker, like the same two sounds, but two different ones, but designed the same way, which is nuts. Go 
how you know how Timbo does it. He has like one high up well, old Timbo. Well, fuck that. Fat Timbo. Not strong Timbo. Not healthy Timbo. Fat Timbo. You said like one hi hat pattern on the left and another one on the right. We can use the pan on the D box to make that sound really spacey and trippy. Stop playing with these niggas. And we're gonna use the real Timberland 808s because all these other 808s are ass. For Timbo, that is. For, for specifically for Timbo beats. I use other 808s for other stuff, but if I'm trying to do this type of beat, uh, don't fucking play with me. Give me that damn super duper distressed through analog 909, bitch. Don't don't you use no decimal for me, ho. All right, so this is F. It's in the key of if, if. No, but Timbaland beats focus in on this range of the keyboard, which is F through A. I don't know why. That's probably just where his ear is at, his tune, his natural tuning of his ear is in this range. So that was F. So now it's C, right? <laughs> I knew how to transpose my goddamn keyboard. I would play this. It can, it's the fastest way to transpose an S control. Is there a shift button? Because I see semi. Semi is semi is what I need. Sim sima. Yes, it has a semi tones. Ah, oh, yes, it does have transpose. Transpose. It's shift plus octave like every other keyboard except for the Akai Mini. All right. Now I need you to show up in Fruity Loops for me. Cause now I can fuck the game up. I don't have. I don't need no hacks. Just let me transpose and I can do everything by myself. You. Uh, you don't see this big ass controller here. You don't. You motherfucking do see this. Don't play with me. Port one, I guess. I don't know. No. Really? It's like that for the loops? Ableton was just plug and play. No problems. But you got some other shit going on. Doll control. I guess that's for the play buttons then. I don't know. That's all I needed. Does the play button work though? Let's talk about it. <laughs> It don't even work if you did it. That's And that's another thing. Someone was asking me earlier, how come you switch so many dolls? Because when you do start buying controllers for your doll, all your dolls don't respect your controller. So you might be in a situation where you love Fruity Loops, but you spent $500 on the um, Arteria controller, and then it doesn't respect it. But you just bought a $500 controller, and you want to use it because you want to use the sounds and edit them on the fly, and you're like, Fruity Loops is like, you got to do a Reddit Fruity Loop forum, a Future Producers forum, a motherfucking inquiry to your friends list just to get the shit working. And you're like, what's faster? Learning a new goddamn doll is. Okay, so that part is over. Now we need ethnic instruments. Who the fuck got the, who the fuck got Booty Talk 50 in the VST? Cause none of them do. Uh, Indian sounds, uh, on some real shit. I can just do it with labs. I have a full keyboard now, I'm gonna be all right. I'm gonna be great. I feel like labs should have a thousand patches already. I don't feel like I have enough labs in my labs. I just wanted to say that separately. I don't feel like labs is labbing enough for me.
Marquise, you want me to... I could T-minus lead something like this. This is more like sad, like Justin Timberlake, Cry Me a River type shit, but I can do the triangle solo lead thing that you're talking about. Fruity Loops, I get nervous with the countdown and shit. So that's just the so that's just the drone. That's just the basis for the background of the music. That's not well. We can push it forward, but I'm not. I just need that to guide my ears where the bass and melody should go. Oh, you feel you go fucking freeze on a goddamn fucking save prompt. I be I built this beat brick by brick, and I be damned if you don't let me save it. You know what I'm talking about? All right, Timbo box. Pause. It's a, a T minus lead. Who got the T minus lead? Who got the uh -oh, Omnisphere? But no, we're not gonna use Omnisphere. We gotta play the T minus lead like a. That's all I need to know. Now I need the right sound.
goes after that that has to finish or walk back to the resolution, walk back to the home key. All right. All right. Not a nice. I, I'm done playing nice with you. I've been waiting for this goddamn keyboard. I better use it. too loud.
people tell me to find that sound. Did I, did I ever put it in Trapanese 5? I should have put this sound in the kit already. I'm bugging, dog. As soon as you said that shit, I got fucking panic attack. There she go. I put it in Trapanese 5. Fucking finally. Fucking finally. Fuck it. Fuck it. West subscription because I had the fucking Tyco drums is what y'all talking about. That's talking about the Tyco drums that they use. Almost like timpanis and toms. No, those are Japanese drums. Who has a Tyco drum kit? Timberland. Kanye West. Mm. Yo, this is so confusing. When I redo my computer, I'm renaming these folders too. Not if I make new folders, out of old folders. Just so that, like, I need drums, I need effects, I need loops, I need samples. I need all that in one hierarchy. And then I'll make another section for loops, like drum loops, because I've been sleeping on them for 20 years. I'll make all my beats with a drum loop, I promise you. I'm not deviating. I'll stack them with the, the new drum kits that I buy, because I love supporting the younger sound designers and buying all their drums in case, you know what I'm saying? But on some real shit, drum loops, and then stack them with the other shit. That's how you get the textures you want anyway. But anyway, who am I, Dr. Dre or somebody? Uh, jungle percussion. Timbo. They're not jungly enough for me, buddy. Remember tablas was all the noise in 2002? If you had tablas and bongos in your R&B beat, it's off to the races. There go, there goes some. Y'all niggas want the timpani? style kit on your site uh, the, not loops no I never I never done that I never went into that territory I have VA legends though that have the single shots but you talking about like the drum patterns already made for you that you could just add on to or did no I've never went that far I can though I can do that I just spend way more time finding and curating sounds than I normally do to make sure that shit's right.
get the um, Fucking no shit, Sherlock. It doesn't fucking work. That's the whole point of me getting canceled 80 fucking times. And you still proceeded to try to load it, you goofy bitch. Anyway, what the brother was saying, Marquis said he went to check out VA Legends. I don't know if you could buy VA Legends on my website. I had to redesign it so I didn't have so much fucking shit taking up space. And I took away all my kits that weren't part of a, an, a, a part of an anthology, if you will. So if you could find the link to it, yes. But the fact that you mentioned it, I need to use it. That's where I got all my cool little voxes from. There we go. Uh, I don't know how far out of key that is, but putting it in key would make it so much better. Sound like something's not sound like something ain't quite tuned properly. I got a message on my phone from the brother Amir. Oh, shout out to the Cash App donation. Shout out to you, Amir. Appreciate you. Um, Cash App money sign MG the Future. If you want me to get a coffee or something, I appreciate all donations. MGTheFuture.com if you want some kids. It's a pretty cool dude. <laughs>
He ends up contrasting it lower with voice, with voices. With... I just had a voice VST. Let me just put a voice in it. We got mad, like, aha voices, but I mean like an instrument voice, maybe. Maybe a ritual voice, maybe. No. Not for this. Yeah. Can you go? Bass niggas be doing that. I'd be like, if y'all don't give little John his whole cadence back. <laughs>
just so fucking finicky, bro. I don't even like it. I don't even... We got to stick to labs or something because something's off. They're not... It's not giving. It's not giving the same key. It's not giving the same mesh. It's not giving at all. I'm annoyed with it. Annoyed with it. Annoyed with it. We got... We got October in this bitch. I'll let McDean play octaves and lose your damn mind. frequency range I think um, I want to name everything but that would be a fucking dummy mission so I'm going to do it like I think like this
two pop by Shogun. Profit or a profit clone, definitely. MG, another brother with the ear for music. I appreciate you, John Connor. Silent versus Gladiator. Uh, Silent is for like pads and Gladiators for leads in that way, in my brain, the way my brain sorts it. I never use pads from Gladiator, although it has a million. Shout out to Chi Town to Texas. Whatever stage. One is that with gear and proficiency level regardless. Yeah, I feel you. It's inspiring to hear that from established cats. Oh, you're watching a video from... I just watched Sight and Kirk State's video on branding. He straight up called some of us in the shadows to get our branding up. Yeah. Yes. And if you rewind earlier in this video around the chat GPT section, same, 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 same. Same science, same think tank experiment. Need help with your branding? Dun, 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 dun. We're sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like, make sure. All of this is for somebody. I don't know. Hopefully you'd ask somebody. Whatever Lil Wayne was talking about. Okay, cool. The percussion sound, Jesus Christ. I guess. I think that's it.
And when that hotline bling, I can only mean one thing. Ever since I left the city, you, 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 you. Suddenly you don't know how to act now. You, 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 you. Got the city on the map now. Send all this to the mixer, and I only need four buses. And I'm gonna create the buses in Fruity Loops. I'm gonna create four buses in Fruity Loops. That's all it's gonna take. Um, how do I do that? I don't fucking know, but I'm gonna start with just isolating the hook and buzzing sounds. So I'll, actually, it's three buses, right? It's like I was whatever, bro. Fucking, it doesn't matter. Bus one, <laughs> bus, I wanna name it bus one, two, and three. I wanna do low, mid, and high, but that's not gonna be a truth. That's no true. Bus two, in the same gradient spectrum, please. Not that the colors are gonna export with us, but you just so that my brain can see that I'm bussing to the right track. And my third, my third bus, of course, in my Luna or Ableton is gonna be the stereo one. So the stereo one, of course, we want it to be the low. The drone can go there. The drone, the pad, the drone, the pad, the strings, all of them can be twerked out like that. I'm holding the command key and it's not going to the master at all. All right, so the rest of them sound wise can go to two. got drums that one because it's timberland we won't go stereo with it that's gonna go to the stereo bus that might be retarded we don't have a drum bus for these hoes that's different that's not gonna be stereoized with the kick send all the regular drums. If I only had one more stereo output. Oh. Come on. Y'all can go to three. Whatever. Come on. Now I'm going to act like I'm mixing. 
mixing it. Well, I'm not mixing it through the D box. I'm gonna use the stems for the D box, but I'm gonna try to gain station this as best as possible. Hold on. Tear the city up with it. I'm gonna do all my panning and stereo stuff here too. Export it as a wave in a D box one forty on my four chicken wings fried hard and shit. Uh huh. Bounce. You gotta change it to split mix of tracks. That's it. Don't go no further than that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't go no further than that. Two Papa says 100, bro. It's a salt state of mind. Shogun says, damn, I missed the mini 3 a.m. A little bit. 333, make a wish. 
always humble. I am more having confidence is necessary, but not coming off cocky is very true. Bro, people can read your energy. Your workflow don't matter. Whether you're, whether you're extroverted, arrogant, or introverted, arrogant, and fake humble, that's not what people are worrying about. What people try to do is like create reasons for why people who should be winning don't win. So they like start tacking personality flaws. Like a lot of people who like make money and get money and do this stuff, they're a bunch of dickheads. So if they're a bunch of dickheads, why would your arrogance or humbleness mean anything to them? It doesn't mean anything. They grew up with a mastery in dickheadism. So if they meet another dickhead like you, you'd probably be best friends. Like it's weird that we domicile ourselves to be in an industry full of predators, first of all. Let's let's not let's not forget. And then second of all, a bunch of people who cheated, schemed, sold drugs, and murdered people to get to where they are. Let's not act like we need to be above that, you know, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, and make sure we have good manners. Like, fuck, man, it don't get me. Listen, I'm the wrong one to talk to about that. So I deleted everything but the three buses. Theoretically, when we play these three buses, it should be the whole beat. Why would you want to see me do an ammo piano type beat? That is a funny thing. I don't make no house music, and y'all want me to do a house music type beat based in West Africa on top of that? Y'all, y'all, yeah, yeah. Huh. Or South Africa or Northeast Africa. It's, I don't think it's West African, is it? But you picked a non-West African to make the West African piano? If you, if y'all don't get your ass. All right, oh. Uh... It's just three tracks for the for the D box situation, right? Really, really, that's how you feel. You gonna do you okay? Really? Um, can I get the whole track though? Ugh. send these three buses to the buses to my hardware and then another bus return from the hardware itself I guess so master to external outputs three and four which one has the bass on it hold on that's the one that should go stereo so that's seven so I'm going backwards seven and eight Five and six, three and four. We shouldn't hear nothing because it's all going to the D box. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it no more. But yeah, if you could see it, right under here, everything's lit up. If I move my arm out the way. Anyway, if you can imagine, there's green lights in the pan knobs right here. They're lighting up. Zulu, my preamp is lighting up. Everybody's lighting up like the 4th of July. That's the file. Oh, that sounds gravy. I moved the bass all the way to the sides. It's all gravy, Trey. You're off beat. That's weird. All you niggas gave up a different tempo. Why? It's all 140, ho. The fuck? Why do you use other dolls? Because when you bring in linear waveforms, it doesn't know the tempo.
Hold control to import them. Thank you. center jesus christ bro the kicks the biggest difference is the fucking kick like the rumble on kicks and bass is crazy on this shit as well are in the back of the stage bro they're not left they're not right they're not eq they're behind my head the percussion is back there and the drums are up there it's fucking nuts further than that i hear hiss somebody got a hiss on the channel i don't know who the hiss is coming from it's coming from the inputs that means it's coming out of the, the zulu hissing it could be because i have high gain on my preamp too that's exactly what it is it's my preamp creating all that noise because i have it boosted to hit the zulu hard so let me see if i can do that without boosting my preamp to hell no white noise please I might have to actually use the motherfucking plus 30 dB button. I've never had to use that. Ooh, shit. No hiss, though. There goes the hiss. As soon as I... There goes this goddamn focus right nightmare. I remember those days. Because you, you, you turn it all the way up and you get noise floor. So I need it up enough to hit Zoo, bitch. This isn't Zoo, fuck it. drive it on with these. Just push it with God particle, fuck it. Where's the noise coming from now? It's coming from God particle. Yeah, it's too much gain somewhere in my chain. It could be, um, oh. 
I'm padding the DI box. Hold on. Let me turn pad off. Let me turn boost off. Because if you pad one, you have to emphasize the other. There's a little noise, but it's not audible. It's still boosting too hard. I'm still hitting something too hard. It's the inputs of something. It's not the debox. The only thing that makes a difference is the Zulu. If I bypass it though, will it? Will Zulu still Zulu at zero? It kind of does. Kind of. But you know, for my purposes, I don't need it to be lo-fi because I'm not doing lo-fi beats. I get it though. See, the noise is, my headphones are really loud, but the noise is loud, loud. Oh, whoa, whoa, where is that signal when you need to find? It doesn't show up in the stream, but it's in my headphones, because my headphones are full blast. There's noise. Um, I got to remember this when I redo my fucking system. I'm going to need this, maybe. The noise isn't coming from that channel then. How do I know what I'm hearing? It is this channel, you goofy bitch. That's very interesting. How do I cancel that out? I know how to cancel it out of the audio, which not a big deal. I can gate it when it's not playing, I guess, but that's weird. Well, that's weird. Brother, fuck is you talking about? There. Hmm. I was about to say, don't fucking play with me.
son, I'm gonna tell you one fucking thing. I don't even I understand the so I'm trying to figure out the noise floor balance. Like if you're boosting too hard on the hardware, you get more noise. So when you boost it on your limiter, you're just enhancing noise. So what I'm trying to do is get the perfect balance between loud enough signal to go to the hardware with low noise. So when I go back into my DAW as clear as possible and I limit that, the noise isn't raised as much. So you're trying to get less noise into analog. I'm trying to get less noise at the beginning of the chain than at the end of it. So when I boost it artificially with a limiter or something, it's not as egregious, especially trying to make it loud with hardware and the noise is raising, raising, raising. I'm not worried about that. But I, what I was saying is I've never had my drums hit that hard in my life. Anytime I'm in Fruity Loops making beats and you get these big ass drum kits, you're like, yo, this shit about to smack and you hit export of Fruity Loops. You're like, wah, wah. But this time it's like the tempo kick is still tempo kicking. That's fucking nuts. I'll take the little bit of noise floor. When Who's listening to silence? Nobody but me. Except for right here. noise there's also noise from rc20 on my loop but this shit's going to irritate the fuck out of me it's when i put god particle on it to enhance the the, the analog signal yeah it's a it's too much gain fuck There's a little bit of noise when I increase my preamp gain. Fuck! It's like I need half of the gain. It don't matter. It don't even matter. It don't matter. It don't. It don't. It don't, it don't, it don't, it don't even matter. It don't even matter. That's just fucking, ah, it's gonna drive me crazy. I wanna chase down. It's between the output and the input. It's, it's just enough noise to drive me crazy when the gain is on it. When this is off, you don't hear it. But there's always noise there because you're always using analog, but fuck. Yeah, I can use, um. the brother says, uh, RX it out. Yeah, but bro, no. 
I'm going to fix it. I'm not going to have no fucking noise. It's one of them cables. That's it. It don't go no further than that. I'm fixing it later today. Um, and like the brother DJ Shaw says, you don't hear it in the stream because my headphones are amped up to hear it. And you can see it in the meters, though. You can see it when I'm not uh, right here at the far right-hand side of Ableton. If I put God Particle on, you'll see it. This shit. That's baked into the audio file if I hit record or print right now. So the louder you played in the car or the louder you played in the club on top of all the gain I'm adding, that noise will get louder too. So if you're making a big club record or a big stadium EDM festival record, you don't want that noise at all. Though the noise like this is the same noise that picks up in guitar pedals, same noise that picks up in a, a SP404 at low levels. And I think a lot of that gives your music that feeling of something in the room with you. Because it's literally electricity. But um, whatever, dog. Whatever. We're just going to print this. Export audio to MP3. Ew, that's nasty. You can't do it like that, stupid. Export the, uh, it's supposed to trigger. It's supposed to trigger real time rendering. Interesting. What the fuck am I missing here? It detect. Oh, it only detects that if you fucking um. Uh, it only it only does that if you uh, use the external insert plugin. It doesn't know it when you're just routing. But what the fuck was it bouncing, brother? It's not that difficult to be smart. We gotta record it like Pro Tools. Fuck it, let's go. trying to figure out the noise issue the noise is coming from my hardware for sure is it the balance cables unbalanced cables probably because i have a di box and preamp situation 
which one of the two it is, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I remember running into this problem before. Anytime I daisy chained, and I think using my patch bay broke it up a little bit, so I didn't notice it like that. But my preamp is a high gain preamp, and I'm using three preamps, so I know somewhere in this shit, I'm doing too much gain too early, and that's fine. I'll I'll bring out isotope meters in a second and figure out how to do that. But as long as I don't hear all that shit when the beat's playing, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. It's okay. It still sounds fire, even with my OCD being triggered by the by the static of the sample and everything, but it's, it's where it needs to be for me. Record it to a print track, then export just that. It wouldn't matter. You're going to hear it because you're going to compensate for volume on your phone or your system to hear it anyway. It's, it's all the same. I, I captured noise. I just got to mitigate how much noise is captured from who. But I'm telling you, it's my goddamn preamp. My preamp's too loud somewhere. It's leaving, is the Zulu the preamp that's causing that, I bet you. Because it doesn't look like the D-Box exports very loudly on the trim. Because you can't see it on the meters of my preamp when I do that. So it's the preamp compensating for how quiet the fucking D-Box is, which is interesting to me. There's a button I don't understand, I guess. Somewhere, somewhere, I'm going to, it sure has got me green apples, I'm going to figure it out. But yeah, man, before I delete this, make sure to beat export it. Hello. Hello, genius. Nigga, I am so confused, bro. My brain is tripping on this, the psychoacousticness of that. Because, like, I've used Fruity Loops for years. I've never gotten Fruity Loop drums to hit like that, particularly the kick. Because by the time you mix the bass in and the low frequencies of your synthesizer bus, it just muddies out the kick. The kick kind of like, you know, it sounds like a, like a knock and not a boom. It sounds like... You know what I'm saying? The kick is there, but it, you notice in most trap beats, we don't even use kicks no more because they're fucking useless. You don't hear them in the mix. But in this shit, the kick is like, boom. It's And, and it's a kick stacked on the 808, and you hear both of them like, kong, kong, kong. like, listen to it. Listen to yourself. Let me know if I'm bugging. Let me know if I'm all placeboed out. I don't know. I've been turning my headphones up too loud, too. It could just be me. But I've made plenty of struggle Timberland beats and free loops alone. And they, the, the kick ain't kicking. That's crazy. That's crazy. And they gonna sit here and tell us not to get no fucking summon unit because we don't need it. 
Bitch, I want all my SoundCloud free downloads to be better than that whack shit that industry is releasing. Best believe that. You said it could be the deep freeze on the same circuit? Oh, yeah, I do have a power conditioner. I have a power conditioner. I think um the D-Box is plugged into it. The preamp is plugged into it. But that don't mean nothing, though, because I have other stuff that's not, that could be touching somewhere, for sure. But I'm not going to get caught up in that matrix. We'll figure it out. I think. <laughs> At least I don't have a patch bay to worry about. I know it goes from point A to point B to point C to point D. Like, I can find it somewhere. Just by unplugging something, I think I'll figure it out. But until next time and shit, I thank all you guys for being here with me, especially all the nerds who like chasing down electricity hum problems. But um, I think even if I don't ever figure it out, it's just worth it still. That shit sound different, bro. tail end of the waveform you'll hear the noise that recorded into it but it blends in with the lo-fi guitar so it, it, for that track it'll work but when i get into my r&b r&b i'm gonna have i'm gonna have a conniption autumn b says what so what's important about the d-box because i'm rebuilding my studio um uh, oh the d-box is an analog is emulating your analog console summing all the tracks together so it's a two bus summing engine. It's it's not even that. It's I can't explain it to you, dog. Like I've said, if you go to earlier in this video, I broke down everything technically, but I'm but I'm reviewing it mentally as I've done this video, and coming to the conclusion that I don't get none of my beats out of fucking Fruity Loops to hit like that. So D box, so Pro Tools, so ah. <laughs> I'm going to need Pro Tools. All I'm saying is this. If I were still a Fruity Loops producer and I had the gear, oh, Lord, FL Studio to Pro Tools, no question about it. Don't actually argue with your mama. D-Box for sure, UAD perhaps, and all my shit's going to sound better than everybody trying. I'm telling you. I'm talking about sonically. All right, at that point, all you need is good, like, you know, good ingredients, good loops, good drum kits, whatever. Uh, I make my own loops most of the time, so that's not even a concern. The loop I made was also processed with the same channel, which is cool, too. So it's like my loop. If you listen to the loop in this, it doesn't sound like... It doesn't... It doesn't. It messes with me a little bit. Because I never hear things in that spacing before, like as I'm making it. So hearing it in that space, I think the D-Box or any summon console would probably give you that effect. But it's so subtle. It's so subtle. It's not it's not like buying a compressor. It's nothing like adding lo-fi guitar pedal. It's not that dramatic. It's very subtle. Until you fucking hear it on the kick and bass track. Then you'd be like, it's not so subtle here. For sale says messing with me, I'll sample the hum and turn it into a Reese for another project. I know that's right. Reese Space. Two Pop says, I've been told to buy one, never felt the need to, but I'll have to just help against a power surge. Oh. Yeah, because there's power conditioners and power uh, regulators. So the, the cheaper ones are like surge protection for sure. But they make a higher end one, which is probably what I'm going to need, which actually conditions the electricity that comes through it. That's some other shit. That's usually like three to five hundred more dollars. I don't have one of those. If I get one of those, it might solve a lot of shit. But one, <laughs> one piece of equipment at a time. Catch me next year. Isabella says, do you have a summing bay? Uh, do you, I have nothing connected to a patch bay no more. Everything's direct. Summing to D-Box. I'm sorry. Summing to DI to preamp to Zulu to Apollo. That's the big loop. So if there's a problem and a balance or unbalance, it's probably me. It's probably be between the DI box and the preamp. 
Tupac says, not sure if I asked you before, but do you have an SSL bus? No, I don't have an SSL mixer. I don't have a bus compressor. I have a I have a regular compressor, but I don't have an SSL anything. I don't want the SSL sound for my music, un unironically. I like where it is now. I ain't gonna hold you. Man, there's not too much further I can go. I just had to hear how this shit sounds with vocals, like mixing songs with words. But yeah, bro. What a time to be alive. Record it, print it, and export just that immersive. Um, I could do you one better, I think. I can take the master of the original. I could take the Fruity Loops master and just let you hear that if that's what you want that for. Yeah, that's the Fruity Loops version. So if you wanted to hear the Fruity Loops version and then hear the, uh, if you want to go from the Fruity Loops version to the D-Box version, you can do that. Just remind you though, I changed the speed of my version. I found a power conditioner at the thrift store about a month ago. Yes. Autumn B says, oh, okay, I thank you. I know what you mean. You put me on Ableton, but I have logic, dummy mission. It's not a dummy mission. They create very differently. Nah, bro, none of it's ever a dummy mission if you learn from it, for real, for real. It's a dummy mission if you do it because of something. Like, I'm doing this because of this. And I was like, that might be a dummy mission because that's not the best way or fastest way to do that. But learning two dollars, that ain't a dummy mission. You talking about time stretch again? Mm -mm. This is fun. This actually makes music fun. If I can get machine to work, oh lord. If I can get faster machine like I used to be faster machine, chopping up shit, oh lord. Jetson made another one. Jetson made, J J he made another one. Any other questions though? Shout the mid game. I appreciate that, man. Fire emojis. Let's talk about it. It's four o'clock. I've been streaming for four hours, five hours. Oh yeah, I gotta go somewhere. MG, do you think singers are making a comeback if people get tired of it? It's not so much like, it, you know, when you ask that question, right, you're thinking of like the mainstream. Do I think on a mainstream concurrent level that multiple singers are going to make it a comeback? I don't know that people know how to sing no more, so I wouldn't give it that. But would I suggest that if you had a good singer and you can producing really good songs for singers, would that have a place in the marketplace? Yes. And it has nothing to do with streaming or AI. It's just that so many people can't really sing. And because they can't really sing they're not comfortable on types of productions and instrumentals that require really singing. So if you can make really R&B progressions and you get a person who can really sing and harmonize their own voice in the instrumental too, they're conscious of pitch, then yeah, that music will come back. That's why Adele keeps winning fucking all the Grammys. It's the real shit never go away, bro. It just never, but does the real shit get popular again? Like everybody's doing real shit? Listen, it's never been that way. Even in the 90s when the mainstream stuff was curated by people who cared about technology and recording, red book spec and all that shit, everybody else that wasn't signed shit sounded like ass, dog. That's the difference. Like, ass was more assier back in the day. Just like the noise floor got raised with the gain stages in my setup, the noise floor, aka the ass has risen to the top. The same thing with technology. Technology has propped it up so much ass. So like when you go to the, before you go to the bottom of the ocean, the ass was down there. Now you just go out four feet where the wave starts and there's ass bumping into your face. The problem isn't that good, real music and all these things that we covet don't exist somewhere. It's just that it's washed out necessarily because of how many people can do it. And I love that so many people can do it. I would just love that if there was a differential line between the fact that everyone can do it and then the not everyone who are actually masters at it. That's all I'm asking for is just a clear, concise uh, separation or acknowledgement at the very least or a, a some type of not even standard per se. But we, listen, when we used to talk about who the best producers were back in the day, it wasn't a fucking technical argument. It was like Dr. Dre, DN, like 
No one mix better than Dr. Dre. Subjective, objective, relatively, like no nigga. Chronic 2001, the end. That is the quality gold standard for hip hop mix albums at that time period, especially. There wasn't a whole bunch of fuzzy talk about if the guy who did 93 till infinity was as good as Dre. You knew in your soul everybody else wasn't mixing as good as Dre. It didn't matter why, it didn't matter how, you just knew it. You pushed the play button, it talked to you, no question. Someone gets on and plays their CD and they play the chronic back and forth, you can hear it. You know there's a difference. We don't have to pathologize it. Today, because so much ass is being pushed to the top, there's a lot of ass-based narratives out there. No disrespect to nobody. I'm just saying there's a lot of people who only recognize ass, only create ass, only use ass, only have ever pushed out ass, only rapped out on ass, only mixed ass records for ass artists. There's a whole bunch of ass out there. And because it's so much ass, it's so much more popular. So you mistake that the popular narrative and the go-to, um, the go-to narrative you think is the standard of the narrative about what we do. You think these people are good. These people aren't good. These people are always ass. It's just more of them. Oh, oh they're making money. Oh, they're more popular. But it's because so much of it is drowning out the others who are way better. And, and I'm not complaining about that. It is what it is. It's, like I said, you got to balance the equation on both sides. So with that being said, what I'm saying is I'm always trying to push the narrative out of the sandbox of ass. Let's push the narrative into like, oh, quality matters. This is that. This does this. Let's get it. Let me show you how it works. And the most beautiful thing about me doing it in particular is that you guys can see all the videos when I wasn't doing it. Y'all can see all the videos in which I didn't have it. Y'all can see all the videos where I diatribed and philosophized about it before doing it. I've been talking about this D-Box. I've been warming up this moment for a month now. It's been sitting on my desk for a month. So I've been telling you like, yo, when this happens and this happens and this happens and now I can do it. And then I'm going to show you and then I'm going to upload it. Then you're going to fucking hear it yourself. We don't have to go to the narrative of the ass. You just make your own decision. The diversion without D-Box sound better not good, not hard. Did it sound better than the non D-Box version? Let's do that conclusively. Is it better in some way? No. So what is the difference? Hey, like, why do we have to, you know what I'm saying? So many people argue because they're, they're used to the ass. And the ass is a strong word. But let's say the communistic, um, this attitude that humans have, bro. And I think it's baked into self-awareness. That's why a lot of people are scared to be confident and scared to be arrogant. You know why? Because most people, especially creative people, I don't know why I'm like a hybrid version of you guys, but I notice a lot of scared, a lot of creative people are scared people. And um, they're not scared, like they're not men or nothing, but scared of judgment, scared of feedback, like true brutal feedback, scared of someone telling them, you just spent three hours mixing hot ass. Man, bro, that should save your life because it's going to save your time. Because if you don't get told that you wasted three hours mixing hot ass, you're going to spend the rest of your life making and mixing hot ass because no one's told you it's hot ass. At least if someone breaks your heart or hurts your fucking feelings, you can go back in even with a chip on your shoulder and make sure it's not ass again. And from that point forward from the rest of your journey, you're out of the ass tank. A lot of people are stuck in the ass tank, and the problem is a lot of peers are putting you in it. A lot of peers are keeping you there by being indifferent or nonchalant about what it takes to be great, what it takes to sound fucking good. Of course it fucking takes money. Let's get past that. Can you do it without it? Maybe you fucking can. But do you want to be fucking great or nah, nigga? Do, are we going to space? Are we going to fucking Mars or nah, nigga? Are we building rockets and going to Mars? Or do you just want to take a fucking canoe down the fucking river? Like, dog, it's two different conversations. And the thing is, everyone in the ass category keep having the shallow end of the water conversation about shit they're not even good at there. They're not even good in the doggy paddle pool, my nigga. They're not even making good beats. They're just talking about the shit half of the time. At least every time I go live and I make a beat, it's a new fucking beat. These niggas just been talking, talking, tweeting, tweeting, discording, discording, Reddit, and Reddit, and they haven't, they haven't achieved a fucking sonic milestone since they fucking got a screen name popping. 
And then this is the shit that everyone gets infiltrated by and filters their judgments through and filters the questions that I inevitably have to answer, that I inevitably have to demonstrate. Then guess what? I inevitably have to pay for and buy stuff just to just to fucking flesh it out. I already knew the fucking answer before I had the money. You know what I'm saying? Like the answer is obvious. Of course, it's going to be better. Let's stop doing that shit. Oh, it's not the sword. It's the swordsman. Bitch, I'm the same person. I know that. So you're telling me the same person without it versus with it, it'd be better off if I just stayed without it? That doesn't fucking make sense. It's the same car with or without the twin turbo. Like, what the fuck? You got to go the speed limit? Yeah, because you're in the ass pool. you doggy paddling. You don't, you, you too scared to let people review your shit. No one's ever going to hear your fucking shit. So yes, you don't need to worry about mastering. You don't need to worry about equipment. Ain't no one going to hear your shit because you're too worried about being comfortable and doing the bare minimums to be accepted by everybody else in the fucking three foot pissy water. You're too worried about how it looks. You're too worried about the picture. You're too worried about being smarter than everyone else who then wasted their money on gear. And I found, you know. All the shit I've seen passively for 20 years, dog. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Every I know every personality type that goes through it. I watch niggas fucking what, five years ago when this was less common. Because you remember five years ago, 10 years ago on YouTube, there wasn't niggas that looked like me making beats like me talking about any of this. Let's, let's, let's go back to a clean slate, right? And I remember challenging this paradigm and going in this direction. And then what happens? You get a guitar pedal? Everybody get a guitar pedal. You remember, you're fucking there. When I was just making a joke the other day about how come everybody NPC is plugged into the SP-404 suddenly, you was there. There was no fucking SP-404 tutorial. You remember? Because I fucking remember. Because I had to make the fucking videos. People were asking me. Can you do a tutorial about chopping? Can you do the tutorial on how not to use a step sequencer and do the tape mode that DBI seen all of them be talking about and the J Dilla? You remember that shit? I fucking remember. I lived through it, dog. I lived through all these same niggas that tell you the hardware and the quality don't fucking matter. Sit here and tell you, you don't need a guitar pedal for that. They sit here and tell you, you don't need an NPC to do their drums like that. Every time a nigga told me no, every time a nigga told me, came in my stream and argued with me. On, and, then, and then get behind your back and act like they don't even acknowledge they watched your stream, but they're having a conversation and in someone else's stream. Do you remember? I fucking remember. I was there, bro. That's why you say you, you can't you can't mud flood this shit. Everybody was like you didn't need it. Now everybody got the shit that they said I didn't need. How the fuck they all got it? Listen, there's niggas right now streaming with the setup that I pontificated about. Niggas went and spent thousands of dollars for the shit I said I would get. So what the fuck are we talking about? Either I know what the fuck I'm talking about or I fucking don't. But in the event that I don't fucking know what I'm talking about, why is everyone copying me? Whatever, dog. I ain't even about that. I'm just pointing it out. When I speak about this shit, it's not just how I think. It's the results. It's like, y'all nigga didn't hear it before. Now y'all hear it? Oh, it's good. So you can buy one now. And now the listen, I watch a nigga shit, man. I watch nigga shit on hardware for hip hop, dog. It'd be, it's, this, that shit blows me. I watch niggas shit on the MPC. I watch niggas shit on the SP404, the ASR. I watch niggas shit on that in lieu of all the cool stuff we have in our computer. I watch niggas push back against me on Serato's sample, dog. Let's not go no further than that. I've watched niggas talk about guitar pedals versus amplitude, guitar rate, whatever the fuck. I've, I've watched it happen. I've watched people spend $400 or better to get fucking sample rate and bit rate reduction on some module outside the box. And that's the most least used effect you're ever going to invest in. But they did it anyway, just to be part of the fucking club. So I'm tired of these I don't hear a difference ass niggas arguing, arguing, petitioning, trying to keep the ass pool at a level. And then once it finally breaks through and they hear the right stream or see the right conversation... They do it, and then they get to act like they were part, they were down ass niggas. They these niggas, you fucking Brandy, at, you fucking Moesha head ass, you motherfucking Ray J sister ass niggas. Brandy wanna be down ass niggas. They don't give a fuck about music and quality. Why you even be talking to me? Not even like you talking in the chat. I mean like in in the ethos of music production, beat maker, Discord, Twitter space, Facebook space. Don't fucking talk to me or about me. 
You're not there yet. Don't even talk. Don't don't stop raising your fucking hand. Stop asking questions, bro. Fucking you. You work on two bar loops and four bar loops, bro. Don't worry about fucking me. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Ben knew what the fuck I was talking about. I knew what the fuck I was talking about before I got this shit to talk about it. Now I'm just showing you. Now that's all I'm doing. I'm just walking through it. Like here. Remember I said that? Remember that random stream, that audio producer discussion? I kind of pontificated about that. Oh, yeah. It's funny how all that came to pass. Oh, that's funny, MG. You kind of predicted the AI and this. And that. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's before niggas had it. I've been talking about what AI going to do before niggas had it. There was no refusion. There was no open AI chat GPT when I talked about it. And it happened just like that, did it not? What the fuck are we talking about? Why am I explaining myself? The fuck out of here, bro. MG the future, dog. It's right in my name. It's right in my fucking name, dog. It's right in my fucking name. Like, but I ain't shit either, okay? I ain't all that. But I don't have to be to know what the fuck I'm talking about in the track record to match that. All I'm saying is I really, really, really care about this stuff. I really, 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 really love music. But more importantly, hashtag operator, I love quality music. We can say that's subjective all you fucking want. We can change the subject all you fucking want. But it is what it is. And it ain't what the fuck it ain't. Ain't no amount of cognitive dissonance arguing with the spirit of the conversation or arguing with me personally even because now I start to notice there's some other type of content creators who are more emboldened to speak but before you raise your lips at me understand that I know I know more than I say and I know more than I can see just be ve just tread very carefully for those for those I'm noticing but for everybody else man just enjoy the fucking ride a D-Box costs $400 in today's economy. Lord Jesus, the reason why it took me so long is because it stayed at 1,000 used for over 10 years. So even in this conversation is what I'm having. It's literally the best time to get the shit. Because this is like the only time in human history of pro audio music production where everyone doesn't think you need pro audio gear. So most people are selling it or don't know what to do with it or there's not a YouTube video for it. You know how it is. You get some shit, you don't understand it, come back years later. That was me in the SP303. No judgment zone. But you get what I'm saying? So there's so much more gear in circulation because there's so, so many people trying different things and you know wanted to do it and change their mind or figured out videography or DJing was better. Whatever the fucking reason is, it doesn't matter. All that matters is now, today, as we're having this conversation, this shit is way more accessible than it was in 2011. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and that's the part that really grinds my gears because a lot of the voices who've been saying this doofy shit about quality music and production techniques have been doing it since this shit was expensive. And the problem that I have in that is their music never got better. So picture this. I jump to every DAW, every VST, every hardware workflow, and I'm just going to keep getting better and better and better and better. These people who said you just need a handful of plugins, one DAW, and whatever drum kit and samples, they're not getting better. And we get really deep and technical because then they start invoking plaques and awards and stuff. They still ain't got a Grammy. They still don't even have a technical Grammy for the sonics of their album, of their perfected mix craft for the past 10, 15, if not 20 years like me, doing the same thing. They haven't mastered doing the same step. That's why I don't listen to them. It's not even about the topic sometimes. Sometimes I just look at a nigga that can only do three things. Like like someone on a skateboard who can only do a kickflip. It's like, that's really cool, but we're not going to talk to you about vert ramps. You have fucking no idea what to do once that board gets from out underneath your feet and you're in the midair. You do kickflips, nigga. The board comes down before you blink. The nigga flying through the air on the vert ramp, he has a different, he has a different frame for reality. Is this the same thing with this music shit? A lot of niggas that have different levels, and, 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 and it sounds like they don't know that. It sounds like they don't know there's different levels for different devils. And unfortunately, I'm talking to a general cast of characters. There's some people just starting. There's some people who just starting back. There's some people who did nothing but hardware, want to learn Fruity and Ableton. There's some who learn Fruity, but they want to see you do it in Studio One. And there's a whole different sea of people 
But I'm talking about people who do these dumbass arguments and create this dumbass content talking about what does and don't matter inevitably just to end up having the shit that don't fucking matter. I'm just bookmarking this video. That's it. Talking to my future self. So, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for dealing with my rants and my tirades. A little masculine energy ain't going to hurt nobody, I promise. I'm not going to punch nobody in the face. We can still be friends. It's all good. I just had to get that off of my system. I'm going to go back into the world today. I'm so excited. Again, shout out to the brother JP. That's who I got the D-Box from. Shout out to my homie at Native Instruments. Shout out to, like, shit, Av McCree. Shout out the motherfucking everybody. Shout out to Shogun. Shout out to the tribe. Shout out to Keyflow. Shout out to Tupac. Everybody in here. Jayon Baby's always in here. Everybody that's always in here. Shout out to y'all. Thank y'all. I love y'all. For real, for real, for real, for real, for real, for real. This shit wouldn't be fun. This wouldn't be exciting. I wouldn't even, my blood wouldn't even get flowing to even be this, you know, to, to do something, to create, to destroy these niggas. I wouldn't even care about that if I didn't have the, the wonderful viewership that I have. That keeps me going. Keep me pushing P. For, for better or for worse. For real, for real. Because I ain't got a Grammy yet either. Shit. But that can change. If we stop focusing on ass level pool water. Sims you the future. Until next time.